Hello everyone, welcome to Critical Role tonight. We have some interesting adventurous points to go over. We're also coming off of uh, uh, International uh, Tabletop Day, which we had a great time, met a lot of the wonderful fans, one of which had created their own t-shirt of our group and inspired us to do the same. So you'll see a bunch of us wearing our fantastic full assortment of Critical Role party member t-shirts tonight, uh, just for fun. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this started as we all have a chance to warm up with uh, some of the character backgrounds and maybe a little surprise. So, be back here in a few minutes, guys. Pike grew up in the outskirts of town, near the Bramblewood. Her ancestors were a family of deep gnomes with quite an unfavorable reputation. Thievery, destruction, and trickery left them with the curse of the last name, Trickfoot. Saren Ray, the goddess of healing and redemption, had other plans for Pike's great-great-grandfather, Wilhand, who left his family at a young age after a dream. A dream that changed the course of the Trickfoot family. Will Hand devoted his life to Saren Ray, and pledged from then on that him and his family would live a life of service and devotion. As a child, Pike seemed to have an affinity to heal. Whether it was animals, people, or even flowers, she felt she had a purpose in making things whole that had once been broken. She studied and learned the ways to heal through divine magic. She lived a peaceful life, quiet and simple, until one day, Wilhand was captured and almost killed by a group of Goliath barbarians. One of the Goliaths took a stand against the murder of the innocent gnome, and he himself was beaten, bloodied, and left for dead, abandoned by his herd. Wilhand went to Pike for help. She prayed and healed this barbarian as best she could, bringing him back to life. When he awoke, she discovered his name was Grog Stonejaw. After that, they were the best of friends, a rather unlikely pair. Little did she know that in a few years' time, Grog would soon return the favor and bring her back from the clutches of death. After being killed in battle, Pike felt angry. She wanted to be stronger so that it would never happen again. She spent four months at sea, training with the men and women aboard a ship called the Broken Howl. Gripping her holy symbol in one hand, and her morning star in the other, this time, Pike is ready. Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw, a goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life, combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ill. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse. Grog felt only pity for this... <laughs> this terrified little thing. His disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then 
that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save, saved him. It was the kindness of a known cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from Death's Edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, Grog can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches, <laughs> or, or accompanying Scadlin to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ale. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. Under that unintimidating petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. Literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Tal'Dore, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee-shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways. It wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. Just like that, her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. Every druid leader-to-be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilbin, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? Percy was the third of seven children, born to a noble family who lived far to the north, in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwood's men. As they ran, Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Oh, you haven't heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. Alone in much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, 
unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the female swoon. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I am Tiberius Stormwind. I hail from a town called Tyrix, located in the heart of Draconia, born from a politically respected family. At the age of 15, I succeeded in passing the Sorcerer's Rite, showing prodigy-like control of my magic. The judges and the Draconian High Council were amazed at how powerful my spells were for how long I had been training. At 20 years old, I was the youngest appointed member of the Magic Guild in Draconian history. For the next few years, I almost went mad from the malaise of being a guild member as it's rather boring. However, one day I happened upon a chamber, unused for quite some time. In the room were stacks of books and maps of the surrounding cities and areas around the known world. For months I would frequent the chamber and learned of artifacts from legend. After a long period of research, I made a list of artifacts that caught my eye. I brought these findings to the High Council and was told that all of the information in the chamber I stumbled upon was either believed to be fiction or unsolvable mysteries, and hence were lost forever. I found those answers to be unacceptable. A year later, I devised a ruse and managed to convince the city council to lend support in me leaving Draconia on a mission of peace and diplomacy for the surrounding kingdoms, going from town to town and making friends and allies in and for the name of Draconia. Being a red dragon born, I had quite the task on my hands in that respect, but it was exactly what I needed so I could explore the world and find these artifacts, as I felt the truth was out there. Some may describe me as buffoonish, but I say poppycock to all that. I am much sharper than most give me credit for. I just don't pay attention to things sometimes. I've also been known to be rather cunning, loyal, uh, happy-go-lucky, and, well, dangerous. I can't help but show my true scales every now and then. But overall, I think I'm quite friendly for a dragonborn. Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vaxil Dan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born by a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. But their cool reception among the elves there never warmed and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother and journey back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash. Pressing the townspeople for answers, they learned of the day the dragon came. With their ties all severed, Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough, the way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so many half-elves, Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxildon quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this world were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Syngorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance, and after too many years of disdainful looks, the pair decided to leave his indifference behind and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief, while Vax kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. 
Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, the new intro tonight, which I think we're all pretty damn proud of, uh, was put together by uh, our fantastic overlord, Zach. Zach! Yeah. 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 It's been in the works for quite some time. Uh, also, the uh, mixing and sound effects were done by the amazing Alex Neat, and the music you heard was composed by the amazingly talented Jason Charles Miller. Yeah, so, Jason. Uh, if you guys know, don't know Jason, you should look him up. He's done stuff for The Guild and many of other web shows. Also, a fantastic musician on his own with his own stuff. He was the lead singer of Godhead. He's just a good guy. So you should look him up. Great, great voice also, actor. a voice actor. Yeah. Like, look him up if you haven't. He's good people, and he lent yeah. his talents to our intro. So, thank you, Jason. Yeah, really appreciate that, buddy. Um, Thanks, you, Jason. All right. Also, uh, see, we had a great time at, at Tabletop Day. We got to meet some of our fans. Yeah. Got to take some pictures. Yes. And a bunch of cool folks. Some of us uh, got to go on the stream at certain points during the day. Yes. All around a good time. So those of you who got a chance to tune in, thank you so much. We actually met a fan who had created, as I mentioned before, this awesome t-shirt with the uh, roster. So we were all really inspired yes. to go ahead yeah. and yeah. make some of our own. Um, so we have a party showing off their, their, <laughs> <laughs> their critical role. Positive. Yeah. Uh, crit so, yeah, of crit so one of the things we were actually talking about doing. So this was we'd like to give a shout out. What was that? No, you're good. No, you're good. Shirts? Okay. Um, so yes, the person who made this big shout out to at Ruse Gofty. Woo! Mm -hmm. Thank you yes. for doing this. So a lot of people have been asking for shirts. I don't know if you guys would maybe be into that or not. Yeah, I mean, I'm into so it. Maybe I'm into we it. Wear these. See what you guys thought. You're into but it. But yeah, if you guys are into it. it, we thought about doing a limited run of these and making this the first of our fan designed t shirts. Uh, uh, and every yeah. once first in a while, many. first of many, yeah. That's a every awesome once idea. in a while, we'll have fans <laughs> submit designs, you know, and then we'll pick a winner. And each one will be a limited run. So if you guys will like this, let us know. And maybe we'll make it happen. I'm wearing one right now in my underpants, which we will be selling <laughs> yes. next week. Yeah. And yeah, there might be awesome. Awesome. Still like a I, 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 I'm going to wear mine next game. Uh, next game. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess some people are into the idea. Like, yeah, let, let the chat know. <laughs> um, if people seem to be out, we'll start putting some of these more designs out and getting some, some shirt possibilities to you guys in the near future. So. Let us know in the chat, guys. Awesome. awesome. All right, so. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I got oh, yeah. thank, uh, yep, yep, yep. I want to. I just gave every, everyone in the party uh, rupees. Rupees. Treasure. Treasure. Rupees. Uh, these Actually, were rupees. sent to me by Tim West, who has a great uh, new company <laughs> called Fantasy Coin HQ. If you go to fantasycoinhq.com, he makes. Uh, Matt's holding up a dwarven coin at the moment. They make gems, they make. Uh, fantasy coins, nerd Are coins. Are we doing free ads now for I people? know, right? This is, is this? just a thank you. Oh, okay. Oh. This is a thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Check it out. Yeah. Cool. Or if you just hit, if you hit a really tall tuft of grass with a sword, these pop out of it. So you don't actually have to <laughs> have to go to the guy. Yeah. Just mow like your lawn. Too. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. They they're feel like, yeah. they're like, if they're these were rupees, playing. this is what it would feel like. Yeah. I kind of want to like see throw them at people across the room. I want to trade. Uh, <laughs> I want to get like a pouch. In all. all right, let's play. Oh, yes. Also, guys, as a note, uh, we we have available tonight for the uh, the person, people who managed to get ourselves to 2,150 subscribers tonight. We will send out another promo kit to one of you folks in the chat with another signed picture of our uh, critical role cast. So be sure to see if we can get the subscribers to, to climb up as well. So keep an eye out for that for the evening. So hopefully we can give out another one of those before the night is over. Because that would be awesome. Oh, sorry, my dice are all up in So the let's do this. Let's kick into the game proper, guys. Yes, 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 yes. Let's see. Let me get some proper music playing, because that's what I do. Yeah, that's what right, right, baby. That's what we do. Twenty. So last we left off, the music's not playing here. I, feel, I need music. The music's dramatic. important to me. Um, so, the party had been traveling into the dwarven city of Craghammer at the behest of the arcanist Allura Vysorin in search of a halfling paladin, a very revered folk hero named Lady Kima of Vord, who had gone missing following a vision quest somewhere beneath the dwarven city of Craghammer, supposedly for some great evil that was germinating there, festering and growing. Um, after you guys traversed through the dwarven city, you began to find your way down into the mines, the mithril mines of Greyspine beneath the dwarven town. Uh, after a few fateful encounters, the return of your gnome cleric. Uh, hey, that's me! <laughs> Grog having his proverbial brains temporarily blown out by an intellect devourer. 
Uh, the party then decided to make friends with a mind flayer, an illithid that had been cast out from its people, seeking vengeance and a possible return to its people. Uh, upon making this alliance, they made an attack on the Dwarven or the Duragar war camp that is threatening to to rise up and attack Craghammer from deep within the mountains themselves. Uh, the attack was successful, the general was killed, interrogated, and some interesting information was gleaned from him before his brain was sucked out of his head by Clarota, yeah. the Mind Flayer friend. However, this attack also announced to the local war camp of your presence, in the process of attempting to escape, the druid was damaged and lost her eagle form and thus began a free fall of many party members, a haphazard attempt to use the magic carpet far over its weight limit, led most of the party to come crash landing Yay. and nearly killing everyone. Managed to escape, walled themselves in thanks to Keyleth's uh, stone wall spell, and after staying the evening in one of the deeper tunnels and barely avoiding a roving band of Duragar there, you managed to find yourself in battle with two ogres carrying some sort of strange mutated black pudding ooze contained in a glass container. Glass container being shattered, of course, by an explosive arrow created by Percy and fired by... Uh, Immediately. Go <laughs> like, at the very start of the battle. Led into a very rough battle uh, with this strange mutating ooze that kept splitting and splitting and splitting until through some uh, good teamwork, crafty use of telekinesis in the nearby lava pool, and uh, general high damage rolls, you guys managed to survive the encounter. Barely. Making your way to the bottom of this tunnel, you found yourself looping back around to the large crevasse where the giant waterfall had fallen in before, where you had met Clarota, which allowed you to retrieve your bear trinket. Yeah! And trinket. we... Trinket. <laughs> We pick up as you guys begin to step down into the lower tunnels, the ones that are partially coated with a series of magma pools and falls that are trickling out of the rock side. All right, everyone. Uh, what is our, uh, I was I was just so out of it last time. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> have, we, have we rested? Are we in need of no, some rest? We should, we should probably no, no. rest. Uh, what are yeah. we around? What's near us? Is this just a, a, a tunnel? Is There's there any sort of, of shelter? We're caves? by that lake with the um, with the giant monster. We player. circled all the way back. Or we ran oh, a circle shit. and went down to that place that you told us not to go in the first place. Yeah, that's where we ended up. Yeah. Uh, how was that for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so essentially, there was, there was we're back in the camp. Uh, you're under the camp. You're, okay. you're where the giant the giant chasm leads where down into the waterfall. Fell. Got There's it. the pool of water at the bottom where the Aboleth we was in. We just barely the survived the chat room, and now we need to rest. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the chat room. You guys also just woke up about right? two, three hours ago. Oh. Right, so, so we don't really want... I mean, oh, we could take hit pointing. I mean, you guys could take a short rest That's and use your hit dice to heal up. So. Yes. Oh. You didn't take any damage last battle, thankfully you stayed out of the fray. So I'm okay. You're okay. Okay, great. That's so you were very nimble and out of the fray. Yeah. You did use one of your dominate <laughs> spells. Okay. It's the only only thing of note. Um, so the rest of you who need to heal up, you can use this time to take a short rest and use your hit dice to heal up on your own. So I'm ready. Who are we fighting next? Does so anyone need some healing? Are we okay? Are we all good? I think we're good. Where's everybody at? In terms of. Um, I think. On a. Well, I mean. I'm fine. On a personal level? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> like life and uh, as, as we. Sure as, I get, get some, as, back. as we survey the area, what, what, what's. Where are the. T how many tunnels are we looking at? What's, what's our options here? So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's how many back. doors? He's back. Where are you calling around? Right. So, let me, well, oh, you're really up here. Oh, yeah. Let me pull up this visual aid for you. So, this is the tunnel sequence you guys have traversed down into the main area where the goblin encampment was. Okay. This is the large bridge that went across the giant chasm to where the Duragar war camp was. Uh -huh. uh, this is the giant drop off of the waterfall. You guys are currently over in this section, about to go deeper into this tunnel where a series of small magma trickles are pouring out of the rock. Magma. So we never went up to the war camp and through it. You did. Oh, we, we did. Oh, we did. We nope. crashed down by the tunnel, we fled, we sealed up the way behind us. Okay. Ran in. Got it. Okay. This is all post. So we should keep going, we should just keep going. Yeah. Well, magma. I recommend. Magma. Don't we? I mean, we don't want to go up and through the camp again. That's no, no, no. We're nice. going into the cabin. So yeah. we're going to backtrack the way we came to that fork in the road. Yes. No, no, we're, we're going, going to, into going the down. tunnel. 
Into Did you the see the, the visual yes. aid? Yes, we're yes. going down the no, lava no, no, tunnel. No, no, into the tunnel. I'll into just follow. Tunnel. I thought I understood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there might week. be something to be gleaned from going back through the war camp this, and into that tunnel. That tunnel. Oh, we just came right out of there. No, 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 no. We no. went through the war You guys camp. came through here. Yes. You traveled across over the war here. camp, went back here, and yeah, the tunnel below. Okay. And popped this out right here. So now we're going into the war camp. And just to make sure that my memory is on point, before we uh, <laughs> circled back around, we hit a fork in the road where we could have gone up and we could have gone down. Correct. No one down. wants yes. that. That's behind That's us. That's behind us. We're going, we're going down, down, down. Cheers. Down, down, down. Cheers. Cheers indeed. In the zone. All right. Shall we? So, yes. With uh, we shall. Is, uh, is uh, Clarence with us still? Uh, Clarota is indeed with you. Um, Clarota took a large. <laughs> A uh, black iron Duragar bolt to the chest earlier and is mostly recovered, but still even more hunched than usual. Is he as far as you put it. Uh, he's he been, also ate those brains. Uh, the brains oh, yeah. helped, helped him, him a little bit. Helped him keep healthy, but <laughs> he's still healthy. still a little wounded, but he's taking his time to kind of rest up. He seems to be okay. Not as worse for wear as he was earlier. Okay. okay. Um, the slight wheeze that's always kind of to him is still present. He's just always yeah. a little. It's a little, wheezy. A little, a little oh. rough. Me, me, me. A little rough around the edges. As far as it looks. Yeah, it sounds just like that. All right, so, as you guys begin to push down into this lower chasm, the, uh, the temperature of the air itself grows steadily warmer and warmer with a drier heat. Um, you find yourself, especially those of you with thick armor, um, you find the sweat beads begin to trickle down the side of your face and begin to pool and gather in parts of your, your chest plate. Mike, um, if you'd like me to hold your armor, do you want to take it off for a little while? <laughs> just to sort of no, I'll keep it on just for safety. Let it hang out a little bit now? <laughs> do you even lift, bro? <laughs> <laughs> just saying. You might feel more comfortable with a loose-fitting sort of clothes. Scan and stop being creepy. <laughs> I'm not creepy, I'm just trying. Mind oh, it's fine. It's fine, Scan. Yeah, it's okay, I'll keep it on. Yeah. I'll just have to use my a imagination. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's what we'll call it for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Onward. All right. <laughs> Pressing further down, the air itself that once had kind of a hint of that sulfurous smell is now becoming stronger and stronger as you step deeper and deeper into this cavernous tunnel. Uh, it rests about 30 feet to 40 feet at width and about 25, 30 feet up, and it varies and comes to pinch tighter or, or wider at moments, but it continues in a steady downward climb in a continuous direction. Um, these small trickles, some of them pool and kind of gather into these small magma uh, kind of cups, if you will. More to more magma. I knew it was coming. Uh, mm, mm, that's, that's minus 200 experience points. I feel a bit weaker now. So, uh, um, you get about 20 or 30 minutes deeper into this tunnel before the sweltering heat gets noticeably warmer, and as you crest a slight incline and decline over a small hill portion of this tunnel, you can see now a large portion of the rock has collapsed on the left side, and a gargantuan pool of magma is pulling into the tunnel, essentially covering half of the tunnel you're traversing down. It can be walked on the side of safely, at about two or three at shoulder width, but you only have about a 15 foot width period and the rest of it is just extremely bright, hot, molten rock. Does it hurt us to get near it? No, but it's uncomfortable okay. and I, something to be very aware of and to I watch your step. Great. You feel great. <laughs> I'd just like to point out we're nine adults playing Don't Touch the Hot Lava at the moment. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. no Keyless, Keyless, no you don't have any way of, you say it gets hotter than this. You don't have any way of getting some water out here or anything. Ooh, I do. And um, I pull out an empty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Not helpful. Oh. Hey, Tiberius, um, I've seen that bottle a lot. What does it do? Oh, it, it will. Uh, I pull out two bottles. But this one, they're both empty, of course. But this one is an air bottle. And this one is a, a water bottle. Oh. Oh, thank you. That clears that up. <laughs> 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 Even I feel dumb around. <laughs> <laughs> Your intelligence is now four. four. <laughs> Does it make a lot of water? Oh, yes. Um, it, this uh, 
if we ever need air. I think that's the uh, water one that you just pulled out. I take it out. <laughs> I control a small gust. Mm-hmm. Yes, but oh. what about water? Oh. <clears throat> Hey. Oh my. This, um, if we need water, I do it and I do a small stream. Okay, so a little bit of water just being support perpetually <clears throat> and without seeming end. It's like a the size of the bottom. Oh, nice! <laughs> so, and if you wanted to squirt, I do a small, nice. a small, little squirt blasts on Scanlan. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is Lovely. That, is that unlimited? Yeah. Well, of course it is. Oh. Why would I carry a non-magical item on me? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so what a bottle. So yes. So um, should okay. we try to cross to the little? That sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can really I use really my sure. tracking to see um, any of those? Um, do regard to see um, if any of them have passed through the area. If there's a large group of them ahead of us, I can use my sure. tracking in my favorite terrain to um, see how many within six miles, if there's a large group of them and stuff. Yes, you can. All right, go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll for your tracking check on that. First roll. Do the survival. Oh, here we go. Do it for the Star Wars trailer. This is with well, advantage, well. I believe, because it is your favorite terrain. Oh, okay. Right. Your favorite terrain. Okay, that's better. Uh, is that it? Survival. 21? 21. All right. That's it. You take a moment and you, about 30 to 40 feet, you kind of go through and inspect the way the train's been pushed and the dirt's been shoved aside, tracking footprints and scuff marks in the rock and the walls nearby, uh, seeing if any of the flows have been interrupted recently, and you ascertain that there is actually a pretty continuous patrol through here about once every four to eight hours up and down this tunnel, uh, that can take anywhere from five to ten or more Duragar. sometimes other larger creatures you find footprints that resemble maybe the ogres you mentioned earlier, um, possible troll footprints since you're not familiar with that entity. Um, you also notice that some of the walls have what looks like small localized cave-ins, almost as if something had burrowed through at one time or another. Oh. Uh, large, awesome. Great. large creatures. So there's also things that exist outside of the tunnel system. So as quickly as possible, we should get through these tunnels. I'm Probably a good idea. Yes, as a note, though, you said within six miles. Yes. Um, as you continue tracking miles? down this tunnel, um, and it takes you a good three or four hours to finally reach a point where the tunnel begins to widen up. Uh, you assess that maybe three miles up, there is a localized town, or at least a, a, a mm. population of Duragar oh. amassed in a central place. Check out the brain on Brad. So three to four miles up, you said? Mm -hmm. From where we are at this point? Yeah, from where you began. Oh. Um, so Are you stealthy? We yeah. should probably yes, start stealthing yes, at this point. I was about yes. to say, I'd like to move ahead of the group a bit <laughs> <laughs> and start sneaking along. Let's do that. Go yes. ahead and roll stealth. Uh, do I have advantage like my sister had for? Everybody? You do not. No. Everybody. All right. Should we well, all try to stealth? Yeah. Uh, 26. Uh, this would be a group stealth check. This group is, stealth? Yes. 26. Fail. 19. 15. 7. 17. 7. 20. 26. All right. <laughs> uh, Picking up on the shortcomings of a handful of members of your group, you do manage to maintain what you feel is a fairly stealthy advance deeper into this tunnel system. Um, about an hour and a half of perpetual travel as the tunnel slowly widens further and further with every uh, quarter mile or so, you eventually get to a point where the tunnel shoots open into a gargantuan cavern, a, a, a chamber nearly a mile and a half across from this visual point. It is extremely tall with a hundreds of very jagged uh, stalagmites hanging from the ceiling and rock formations that can kind of rise and fall at different points of the topography. This entire tunnel is built in this strange, large, natural downward curve that disappears out of sight about a mile ahead and to the left. But this huge tunnel is lit with what looks like maybe two to three dozen various uh, small lava falls that are pouring down the sides of this cavern, this, this giant cavern structure. Um, you also see some small pockets of that red glowstone that the, uh, a lot of these warden tunnels tend to use as a light source. Um, you also, as you begin to step into this carefully, uh, you taking point on this, both the, the, the twins, you notice on the far end of this, this, this cavern, uh, there's a uh, 
Let me see here. Well, first off, the entire landscape is rough and craggy with large black obsidian spikes just jutting out of the ground at various points, whether it be seismically created or otherwise. It's a very unwelcoming atmosphere. Uh, and that sulfurous smell is extremely strong. Even though you've gotten used to it as far as you can to this travel, it's still a very pungent odor, and you find that it's going to be very difficult for you to make up any other scent in this location right now other than that horrible mixture of chemicals. It probably isn't very healthy to be breathing at the moment. <laughs> um, okay. the, uh, what you see across the chamber, your eyes focus on a small cluster of buildings, it looks, of a similar construct as the barracks that you saw at the war camp. Um, there's, you can probably surmise somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 to 25 of these structures, all localized in this one area that is punctuated with, you can count about seven of these black obsidian spires that rise out at different points around, like watchtowers. Still natural? No, these are constructed. These are very smooth and have that kind of rigid dwarvish construction with a uh, jagged edge to each one of the, the leveled lips of these towers. Um, the one that you can see closest to you, which is about a quarter mile off, you can just barely make out what looks like a couple of Duragar walking across one of the upper levels and what looks like some sort of ballista and or <gasps> anti-personnel Weapon that is. This is where key must be now. How do you know that? I mean, she had a vision. Oh, plus it's a really big thing. <gasps> That's true. These giant mm. bolt throwers currently reside on each one of these, and then in the center of this cluster of buildings, uh, you see standing a gargantuan ebony fortress. Mm -hmm. Serrated stonework marks the top of each wall, and more of these giant bolt throwers are mounted across the parapets. A massive magma fall descends from the rocky ceiling right above the stronghold onto the roof and is forked onto each side and then continues to flow down, uh, buttressing each side of the stronghold almost as a defense mechanism. Like they built it intentionally underneath this magma fall. Wow. Oh, oh, that's where the trap door is. What? Trap door? That's a trap door. You have a possible... Uh, under the magma? You missed a lot, Scan. I was oh, with you right. the whole time. Yes, but you were never paying attention. I was drunk. You got that new bit. You were staring at it a long time. I, uh, uh, Vax known. creeps back to Pike and ushers her up to the front. Um, do you recall any other details from your vision, from your dreams? Uh, I've definitely been here in the vision. Um, <laughs> I do remember that much. Uh, all of this looks familiar. Um, huh. And I think we're in the right place. Oh. Sweet. So, uh, yeah, very good. you know, That's all depending important. on what else is, is around, what was the building again with the... It's a fortress. The, the, the giant fortress you see is, is called Emberhold. And it's That's not, what it's been referred to as. It's not a temple. It is a fortress. It is not a temple. It's a fortress. Okay. The this temple of where apparently Kavarn, as far as you know, exists, uh, is further Perfect. below in the uh, kind of fungal forest that surrounds this ancient city ruin that has been repurposed by the Illithids that Clarota okay. actually came from. Oh, Got it. yes, and we know here, because um, the general that we mind melded, Clarota re read his brain. Yeah. yeah, I was there. I know, uh, <laughs> so, so I'm reiterating. Yeah, yeah, good, um, thank you for that. Yes. Um, Just making sure, you had this So remember, Scanlan, that the general said that on the left side of the fortress oh, is the how fortress. we can get into the trap door. How we can door. get into the trap door. <laughs> right. Exactly. By the, by the exactly. smaller by of two levels. Smaller by the smaller of two levels. Of two, what? Lava flows. Lava flows. So yeah. what we're looking at is Lurt, the fortress. Lurt. You're looking yes. at Emberhold itself, yeah, the center of the Duragar Society. And from what you've gleaned Ember. from two Big different Duragar that you've interrogated, supposedly where Lady Kima has been held. By King Murgold? By King Murgold. Murgold and uh, yes. Queen uh, King. Ulara. King. Yeah. Ulara. Ulara. Uh, from our vantage point, can we Vantage. see the two, uh, thank you, the two <laughs> lava flows that uh, we were warned about? Uh, that it's way too far away. That stronghold is probably a good mile and a half away from you so right now. So there's a lot of cover as we as we go. There near is a lot of cover. Of all the yes, but there's a lot. Of, it's a lot of open area with cover. Mm, so it's one okay. of those you're just gonna have to Percy. be careful as you move through. Yeah, how, how long would it take, take you? Right? Uh, how long yes, would it it's very dark. The only reason you can weapon. see much is because of the light vision. Very Even at this <laughs> radius, <laughs> things you can see nearby. Um, right now. You, a light source would be very helpful in making sure that you can see details and not fall into anything you don't want to. But it also makes you very visible. To anything else out right. there. So between, you have to uh, between the lava and the red stones, 
the twins can see, correct? Because of the dim light. You can see near, but like I said, things that are a mile away. Right, right, right. It's right. way too far away. The reason you can make out uh, this small city and Emberhold itself is because there are clusters of the red glowstone used within that city and the giant magma fall that currently envelops the sides of, of the stronghold make it very, very visible and, and easy to pick out against the rest of the cavern. So this is a whole little city down here. So we yes. should keep to the off, left yeah. and head down that direction. I'm actually going to go it. ahead and cast uh, Pass Without a Trace. Okay. What's that do? It makes us really stealthy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Essentially, as she finishes... Like the thing that saved our butts last time. Mm -hmm. You've seen this spots. before. As she finishes her incantation, you feel the darkness of the shadows around you begin to coalesce and almost stick to you. And they, oh, there's no substance. For a moment, you almost find yourself repulsed by it until you realize that it's probably an advantageous circumstance. But you find yourself now much easier to slip into the surrounding shadows. They're nice shadows. And I'm doing my flower girl routine with the dust of tracelessness just over here. Over there. We don't really, <laughs> we don't really need, well, you never know, Percy. He, got a really he does it all the time. We just have no idea how many times he saved us. What's gonna, our, that's fair. What's but our angle here, out. gents? Are well, we, we just, we need to get closer up. We need to find this trap door because it's suicide going in the front. Right, and Lady Kima is being held here. So there's an entrance to this trap door that possibly is on the outskirts of the city. Yes. 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 So we need to find it. Yes. Yes, it's on the left. Well, let's go. Oh, it's on the left. Yes. So we're heading left and. Let's going do it. Left. Yes. And the twins will creep it. Continue. Yeah, ahead you guys of the group. are all stealthy. Yeah, so we'll keep. It's yeah, probably keep smart. You're moving keep ahead. Okay. Um, I'll take point on the group that's following. All right. You guys take care of Trinket as I'm ahead of you. Come on, Trinket. Me and Trinket are telling jokes in the back of the group. Okay. Quietly. <laughs> Classic <laughs> trick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys continue staying off of the main path, and you can see there is about a 20-foot natural formation of, of kind of a walkway, or at least the, where most of the uh, patrols and any sort of uh, Duragar foot travel is localized. You can see where that natural road has been created over time. You avoid that path and steer off to the left, kind of dodging between the various bits of terrain. It is a very rocky and... Uh, difficult terrain, should you not be with your ranger, who is the Underdark, is her favorite terrain. Oh, I'll go back then, should I, or is it okay, because we're all together? It's, it's okay, because you guys are in theory okay. together. I'm going to say, essentially, you're just marking places where the terrain would be dangerous to watch your step, and to be wary of any locations that might be unsafe for load-bearing, uh, anything like that, so. Yeah, I saw that, though. <laughs> you calling me low Barry? <laughs> yes. That's modest. <laughs> Specific. Um, as you guys begin to curve around the left, uh, everyone roll perception check real fast. Oh snap! Prepare All for a natural. Oh shit! Lap. That's great. With our proficiency bonus. Uh, only for proficient with, pre with perception. I can't read the dice. Oh. Oh. It's either a six or a nine. 15. No idea. So there's a dot in the bottom? Oh, that's the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> it's a six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 16. 15. 16. 24. Nine. 19. 20. 25. All right. Both Percy and uh, and Vax simultaneously kind of put their arms out and pulled everyone back as you instinctively <laughs> Oh. You hear a slight distant clanking of metal and voices, low kind of conversational voices. Too far for you to listen at this point, but you guys immediately stop everyone, and you can just see over maybe a good 70, 80 feet from your distance, heading up the path you guys have just begun to skirt around, a small, what looks like a, a, a roving patrol of Duragar, probably the ones that go up and down the tunnel. I can, I can ambush them! Ambush them. Yeah, why don't yeah, yeah. we? Why don't we create a distraction and get rid of them? Well, this? okay, but I can. I can be really quiet. I can do um, hide in plain sight now, so I could. Um, How many are there? Hide myself standing there. Do you have no one's seen. You just can hear them. No one's gone to check. Oh, can I look? Yes, let's do. Okay, let's look. <laughs> let's go catch one. <laughs> All right, so just just the two of you, or? I, uh, I How far? How far away are, are we? Are we from them? Like in distance. Right now, you're guessing about eighty to seventy feet, but closing fast. Not closing directly on you because they're kind of doing uh, a slightly increased path. They're, they're taking the path that we're not on, right? Correct. So if we hide, they won't find us they potentially. Won't find us. And they can just pass. But I want to hear what they're saying. Okay, so all of you guys. Um, okay, yeah, we'll hide. I go ahead and I cast 
guidance on on Vex. What is, is that it a concentration spell? I'm yeah. Vex. He's don't, Vex. Don't break our, 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 our you look alike. It's understandable. Because that will that will definitely break your other spell. I'll pull it up your own back. Oh no, then don't keep well, casting that trace. Just get this I mean, it might just be a Guidance is concentration. <laughs> No, sorry, you don't have my guidance. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> no guidance here. Why don't we go yep. just uh, up ahead and Just a little bit ahead and see what we can see. Yeah. Okay, okay, so the two of you kind of work up. Okay. As the rest of you are kind of holding back, the twins kind of slink between the various rock formations and strange jagged spires that are currently peppering this entire underground landscape. You get up to a point where you're maybe 10 feet from the road, and kind of with your backs against the rock, you can begin to see the roving band slowly move around. Um, band? You, uh, the, the band of dirt. Um, you count, at quick glance, roughly 12 to 15. Oh, yeah. Armed with hammers, halberds. Um, both of you guys roll a perception check right now. Perception. Perception check, specifically for this one. Yeah. <laughs> 26. 17. All right. You make out that one of them holds no weapons, instead is uh, Oh, wait, no, I get advantage on perception, because I'm in my favorite terrain. There you go. I already perceived it. Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can also perceive, I suppose. I already perceived um, One of them, uh, one of the Duragar walking alongside, is completely bald on top with this uh, extremely long, well-sculpted uh, black goatee beard that streams down. Thick black, ro- black and red trimmed robes. Uh, carries no weapon and looks extremely dangerous. And he's super. Um, however, as you're listening to the conversation, you specifically being able to uh, understand uh, undercommon. Yes. Uh, what is he saying? You pick up bits and pieces as they begin to pass by. Kind of hold your breath, hoping nobody notices you. And so far, so good. They begin to walk slowly past the rock you guys are against. You overhear one of them say. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, that thing is still out there. Another one goes, slaps him and says, Horik said that he had a whole scouting party in seconds. Another one goes, ah, Listening to Horik was your first mistake. Shut up and keep walking. And they'll keep pushing, at which point the same kind of scared one before him and says, uh, oh, I mean, if that one went crazy, I can't the other ones crack too. I don't know if I feel safe running alongside any one of that Kavarn's pets anymore at this rate. And by that point, they begin to slowly move past, and their voices begin to fade as they continue up the path you guys just traversed down, <gasps> up through the lava tunnels. Oh, oh shit. Good thing I was clearing our footprints. <laughs> it's actually a very it's a good thing. It's a win for draw. <laughs> Is it? Did I do something good? Good job, Tommy. Did I do something good? You guys have like bear tracks and a giant goliath. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are oh, the shoes? These are amazing. Fried banana. Fried bananas. Oh. Banana. Toss me one of those. Mm-hmm. Is that from the chat? You're working. You don't have yeah. time to eat. Oh, thank, thank you, you chat room. Thank you, chat room. Thanks so much. I just got a piece of pizza, guys, but I'll do what I can. <laughs> Next time, sushi. <laughs> sushi. Instagram and. Instagram. 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 Someone who didn't have their name on it. Instagram oh. oh. uh, mystery guy. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god, that's so good. Mm-hmm. So, the sound of the Durgar walking eventually fades, and you feel pretty confident that you're safe to return to the rest of the party. Okay. So, we walk back. Yeah. So, apparently, number one, big party. We don't want to fight them. If we don't have to. Secondly, there's some weirdo creature that's gotten loose and is very, very bad, and it's killed multiple Durgar already. So, wow. right. No that indication of what kind of a creature it was? No, but it might be the thing we already killed. It could have been the thing with the plate that showed up in the camp. I don't know. The, the thing, thing with the, the plate? Thing. Bullet. <coughs> the bullet. The big thing. Yeah. Oh, the bullet. Oh! It could have been that. The Some fresh dog. Yeah. Regardless, we should be very careful traveling. I've seen your sheet, you don't speak. Mm. We could use that to our advantage. We could. <laughs> we could. We could scare them off <laughs> quite easily, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. I like the sheet. All right. I, I can make funny sounds. Should we sounds. keep moving forward at a very stealthy sort of pace? Work up. Sir, a stealthy pace. You guys push forward, keeping <laughs> that wide kind of left curve, which adds a fair amount of time to your travel as you're being careful and moving at a very, very uh, heavy circular arc around the Duragard 
city. Mm, I'm looking for doors and stuff as we go. I don't know why. Sure. <laughs> Looking for doors. Well, there's a trap door somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah the doors have been good. I think that's it's good thing. That'll be the fortress, maybe. But Possibly. Right. Could be farther. No. Uh, can we see, you know, the molten things that he was talking about? The water, the lava falls? Still too far away. Still too far away. Okay. Uh, you guys, are, as you begin to make your way around, you're just starting to get to the point where you can see the front of the fortress. And you can see where the magma fall splits and just kind of coalesces around each side of the stronghold and almost like a, like a blanket waterfall on each side. It does split up at certain points. You can begin to start making out. Does, does the magma, where does the magma runoff lead to? Does it just pour out? Does it fill a moat? It's hard to tell from this distance, right. unfortunately. You have to be closer up to see. Okay. Um, about moat. an hour of travel around the oh, side. Wow. I'm so bored. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that can be fixed, Leo. Oh, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the subject exposition. Uh, of all the things. <laughs> oh, all right. Life isn't like that. You. Wow, Percy. <laughs> it's at this point, immediately catching your eye, yes. Vex, uh, one of the nearby uh, kind of obsidian spires is a different color than the rest. The rest are like a deep black, kind of glass, shiny color. This one is a dull, kind of crimson. Mm. We should go towards that one. <laughs> Because it's a different color. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go check it out. Wait, what was your first color? I'm still laughing at Percy. What? Just eat your banana. Black Twins obsidian. Will go check it banana. out. This one's <laughs> red, it's crimson, red. It's it's ruddy. Do you not know anything? Anyway. The twins are going to go have a peek. Okay. I'm coming with. Do it. Scanlan comes with. Go ahead and roll stealth check. Oh boy. I'm not, <laughs> not my strong Don't suit. fuck it up. No, Scanlan, what'd you do? You dick. What did you do? You can change your mind. Wait, wait, I, I, I got adva advantage. Don't die. I grab, I grab Scanlan and I and I and I kiss him on the cheek and make him say. <gasps> oh! 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 What? <laughs> Way to take one for the cheek. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> oh no! I don't know. You just stopped oh, him from farting into the wow. persuasion. Uh, pers Ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge moment. Can we roll a persuasion against wow. a critical fail? Can you, oh, can you persuade a crit fail? Uh, can you persuade kay. a DM? Wait, is it a fail? Okay. He failed. So, a one. It, a, it was a one. It was a one. That's a one face. That's a one face. I will say, Pike, roll a perception check. <gasps> oh, gosh. Uh, 20. Come on, come on, D20. Come on, D20. Perception? Yes, D20. Twenty. Oh, uh, that's half of it. Fourteen? No, no. Negative. Yes, fourteen. <laughs> 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 not Stop. Unfortunately, Back. you're not quite perceptive enough to notice Scanlan's not quite so quiet walking away as you're distracted by the surroundings and the circumstance locally. Um, you continue up with the twins. <laughs> Absolutely humming to yourself. The <laughs> <laughs> twins being used to your humming, for some reason it doesn't connect. Um, you make your way up to this spire, and about 15, 20 feet out, you notice the coloration is different because it is completely coated in what looks like dried blood of some kind. <gasps> oh, God. And immediately to the right of it, along the ground, <laughs> so currently your, your vision is obscured by another large kind of, kind of twisted stalagma, stalactite. Um, but there appears to be an arm and a whole bunch oh. more dried blood across the ground, stop. just out of view. Can we stop? Can we stop? You can stop. Can however. stop? You're an arm? Scan it! What? What? You're singing. I I'm was just, singing? I was singing? <laughs> I didn't even know! It's a force of habit! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see if I can... See anything in the area that has done this recently? Oh, right. Is the arm attached to whatever? Let's make did an it? investigation check. Investigation check. Is yeah. the arm part of a dead thing or is it alive? It's on the ground. Oh. So no, I'm pretty sure whatever it is. Seven. Can I oh, sure. check you it can out as well? Make, you I can also attempt to make an investigation well. check. Loot the arm. There you go. Wait, I'm doing advantage too, just in case. Okay, that one's better. You get advantage on. No, I got it because I'm fucking in my favorite terrain. <laughs> <laughs> 21. Okay. Uh, the, the state of the blood that you see around seems to indicate that this has transpired over some time. Uh, you're guessing probably within a few days, if not a week, since this okay. happened. I'm picking up one of the arms to bring back okay. the group. So as you walk up towards the arm to grab it, you have more of a view of what's happened. And what you see before you uh, are definitely remnants of some battle 
long past. Uh, they're against these rocky formations. There's dried, dried blood everywhere. No this, pity. This terrible bloodbath. Whatever this this event was, it was probably a horrible thing to to see. There are pieces of Duragar flung about, and I say pieces. I mean, you can't. The only reason you know Duragar there is because occasionally you see part of a head or part of a foot, and you recognize the ashy skin from the areas that aren't currently caked with its own gore. Um, mm-hmm. uh, from what you can tell, uh, because of your in- investigation check, um, the remains are torn apart by no blade, there's no cuts, there's no clean uh, wounds. They're either pulled apart by force, like arms and limbs were wrenched from the body just out of sheer power, like a <laughs> or there appears to be some sort of gnawing, some chewing, like toothy fangs, sharp teeth have hmm. partially eaten portions of these bodies. This is the work of a beaver. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> a large. busy beaver. beaver. I think it's suicide. <laughs> Should we, I mean, based on based on <laughs> tracking and everything and insight, can I? Can we tell if that creature is anywhere nearby? I think it might be foul play, actually. From what you can tell... Well, this was uh, happened in the past. Uh, yeah, yeah it's happened quite some time ago. You're there. I'm right there, singing. Looking at the tracks, you can see... Duragar feet. You can see other creatures that kind of resemble those hook horrors that you uh, you encountered earlier thrown in the lava pool. However, there's a series of tracks that you haven't seen. Where there's there's very erratic footsteps that look human, uh, human size, but they seem to be placed randomly, like one foot here, one foot here, one foot here. <gasps> it's that um, big creature that it was like one of those things that the thing put together. And you like, see oh, what looks like yeah, yeah. strange strikes the sand, like something had been dragged very quickly in a very localized spot, scattered all about. It's a human centipede. It's, it's, it is. It's, it's a very, very strange, it's a very strange pattern that you you can't really grasp what type of creature would make it. And it's it seems like it was here recently or a while ago? Um, from the best you can tell, the last time it was here was about two or three days ago to feast on more of the remains. Like human, it's human should footprints? We give, should we get human sized. Here? Human sized. Or so to we, sh- we could try to set a trap, or we could look and see if we can loot anything, or we can... Is there anything loot? to loot? Does it look like anything shiny loot. in there? Um, any yeah, semblance of armor that belonged to any of these individuals is in such tatters that it is unusable. Um, you do manage to find, across some of the body parts, uh, a couple of blood-soaked gold coin purses. Okay. Um, <laughs> So One of them contains a handful of gems. Ooh! <laughs> so, yes, there's that. Uh, so you can mark that down uh, until you get a chance to appraise uh, them. them. No. No, I don't right. think we want to tangle with this. I'm really we trying to prove. Let's yeah. just keep I'm trucking. really bad at stealthing. We should go. <laughs> 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 we should leave. Also, put the accordion back in the oh. picture, all right? <laughs> Was I doing that? It's force of habit. I don't. <laughs> Like breathing. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the group. I'm gonna bring yeah. my, the arm. I'll uh, take out the cask of ale and pull a little um, tankard of ale just to, because I'm boring. Good man. Sip, sip. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's very tasty. Would anybody else like to say? Oh, okay. Mm. Having been underground for what probably amounts now to about four or five days, that little taste of ale on your lips is a very welcoming and very refreshing <laughs> sensation. <laughs> it's oh, delicious. Oh, delicious. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'm drunk. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> uh, when we get back Just to the kidding. group, I'm going to toss the arm to Grog. Grog, you instinctively reach up and catch it, and you look down and see what looks like a Durgar arm that has been very heavily mangled. Oh, thanks for the head. That's a back scratch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a back scratch. Uh, well, we that was clever, Grog. Grog. No negative anything. It was a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good job. <laughs> I considered it. Have mercy. It was a good job. So there's some good 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 um, centipede human creepy creature mm. that's killed a lot of things, and we should probably avoid yeah. that at all costs. All right. I would agree with that. If we have to, we Seems will, fair. but... We Can we avoid that and still head left of the keep? Wait, we didn't, you we haven't seen we didn't make it into the, uh, into the... Was there a structure that we could have that's entered? That's where we're, we're, we're heading. We're heading towards that structure. Okay. Okay. But I mean, where we just were. The magma filters? Where you just were? No, there's just all these giant like rocky spires okay. just cutting out of the ground. Okay, coated in a dry They don't have doors. We probably looked for like a mess. There were no doors. Oh, okay, okay. I'm looking for a door. Yeah. Keep okay, it, I mean, it appears like there, run there was some, run into at one point it. in time, some very yeah, 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 intense yeah. seismic activity in this area that created this cavern. Okay. And whatever is the source of a lot of this perpetually flowing molten rock. Um, so yeah, the, that's why the entire terrain here is so 
dangerous and, and uninviting is because of the sheer force that went into it, it, its creation. Okay. So we should just keep freaking being careful and keep going towards the very Okay, thing. let's go. Keep trucking on. Pike, yeah. I, f- I have this weird feeling like you wanted to make out with me. Is that <laughs> is that something that happened? Well, Am you I just, dreaming? you know, you weren't paying attention. Really? And that makes I you want to make out with him? No, I think you were you were moving along to try to go stealth, and sometimes you should just stay put and see what happens. Well said, Claire. That was the most adorable diss in history. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yet invited. It's all right, Scanlon. We'll go pay for it later. <laughs> <laughs> A small hit to Scanlon's morale, but <laughs> the party marches on. Yeah. You lose an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah? I deserve okay. it. I deserve it. Twins okay. in front, here we go. Let's right. keep going. Twins in front, you guys continue to push forward. Um, for the sake of the length of this journey, I'm going to have the party go ahead and roll a communal stealth check once more. All right. I still have I still have passed without trace. Oh, up. for the love of God! Which gap has everyone a plus ten? Yep. Oh, really? Yes. Don't bang the guns together. Uh, yeah, that happened too. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Nineteen. We all have plus ten. And this yes. is plus ten. Yes. I rolled a one. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I quickly kiss Percy. Percy. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't know. I thought it might help. You have to use the tongue scan. Uh, Twenty-three. Okay. Is that bubble gum? <laughs> Three. <gasps> I have a habit. You have like plus ten? Oh, that I get to do plus ten. Yes, yes, yes. Thirteen. All right. So it's three failures. <laughs> Three failures. Thirty-two. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. More than half of you guys succeeded. That was uh, the key. A one is two two failures. So. Oh, no. A one is two failures. A one is considered two failures oh for, for this challenge. Yeah. All right. So pushing forward, now you rolling. you manage to stop Percy and, and and find out the root of this audio problem. Um, <laughs> pushing forward, you manage to make your way about a quarter mile on the outskirts of this. Uh, cluster of buildings curving far left. You're just managing to keep out of the city proper and move straight towards the very back wall of this cavern, which is buttressed against what this fortress is built against. So you're kind of circumventing the city to go straight to this fortress. Um, uh, as you're moving about a quarter mile from the stronghold, uh, Vex, you pick up a strange person standing maybe about 50, 60 feet ahead of you. Just a person? Just a person, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> can they see us? Is it look like they can see us? You take a moment, kind of keeping an eye out, and the person isn't moving. <laughs> no. Just standing right there. So, there's a person standing right there. What? You, what, what? A person, he's just standing there. It's too is dark to make like any like details, unfortunately. Nothing. Could be good, could be bad, we have no idea. Can, yeah. I, see, can I see him now that he's, he's pointed him out to me? You can see it. Th- there is a, a, a humanoid standing on its own. It doesn't uh, seem to be moving, though. Maybe, maybe it's, it's a, a statue. Yeah, that's what I mean. A statue. Oh, I'm going to go check it out? What? No, <laughs> I can don't. Can you go invisible? Yes, I can go, go invisible. Go invisible and check it out. Uh, I polymorph and, um, morph and turn into a fly, and I buzz over to him. Nice. Oh, yay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's young nuts. fun. All right, so. I don't know if he's magic, who's gonna know? It's all right. I've got magic too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you approach this individual and notice it is unmoving and is of a singular solid color. Uh, what looks to be uh, what is an illithid or a mind flayer is currently locked in some sort of a reactionary position but is completely turned to stone. Oh no. Oh, like a Medusa shit. type of a thing? Well, we, we faced like basilisks <gasps> once and they did this we to got, We got a lot of things they can do this actually. Yes. We do yes. have basilisk eggs in the bag of holding. Yeah, we got eight of them. Okay, maybe we should crack one on st- statue guy. I buzz back to the group. Maybe you should. I what kind of oh, it's fuck coming. with Tiberius's ear a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> And then I turn, I turn back. Turn back. <laughs> what would you see? What was it? Oh, a crazy statue of a crazy elephant. Um, can, we, can we look I mean, at Clarota like, yeah, cl- and say, do you know anything about this? Clarota kind of thinks for a second and goes, as 
far as I've noticed, voice. Occasionally, <laughs> these patrols do walk with a lizard creature that has this ability. It's generally used as a threatening device or a guardian amongst the city. Oh, so the Dura Guard have passed have this. It's like they're pets. Uh, a trained beast, yes. Why do you suppose they used to have done one of their own? I can only imagine maybe this transpired before the Union. Right. And it's left as a warning. So it's a Dorgar pet. Do we remember how to take care of basilisks? Like, do we not look at them? Is that how they don't? Don't look at them. Don't look them in the eye? Or don't yes, look at their face? A, it's a vision face. Yes. I believe yes? it's a vision face. Okay. This could be a uh, nature check. Double check. Anyone who wishes to make uh, a... I'll do that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> 23. Natural 20. Yeah. Oh, 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 well, never mind. He's got it. Go. Let's stop there. Yay. Just go ahead and dog count everybody. Whatever. Natural 20. All right. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. Uh, essentially, it is a sight-based circumstance. It's entirely visual. Uh, they have to make, uh, they have to catch your gaze, and then that is how they can turn you into stone. Otherwise, as long as you don't catch their gaze, you'll be fine. All right. All right. It's a good thing we've all been so watching dead. Look them in the eyes. Yes. <laughs> Very helpful. Yes. All right. Let's go. Poor basilisk. We're going. We're going on. Yeah. yeah. We're going on. Okay. Let's yeah. keep going. As you guys push forward, uh, look, Clarota lags behind a little bit to inspect the statue and just kind of looks it over for a second. Did you know him? Dave. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Dave. Um, takes a moment to look over and you can see his eyes kind of close slightly for a second. I weep not not the kindest of my people. But nevertheless, should all this pass, I would like to maybe release him from this stony prison. So you know how to do that? I know not, but it can be done. I've seen it. Didn't we do that? Mm. Yes. Didn't we have to do that? We, have a we no, sprinkled some of its blood on your eyes, if I remember correctly. Yes. I didn't. I did a sermon. You did. You did. Yes. I was very, yes, that's I was very sad. You used the blood of the creature. Yeah, there is, there is essentially there is a, a liquid that can be distilled from the massive blood. Okay. Um, we don't have any more of that. Okay. You do not. Dragon, dragon blood for um, fucking days. We also Should we uh, move, move the statue off to a safe place on the side or anything? It's, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Let's just keep going. It's heavy. Yeah. It's been there for a while. So yeah. not give anybody any indication. It's got bat poo on it. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. As you guys press forward, about another 20 or so minutes, you now have a much better view of the left side of Emberhold proper. Mm. And you can see the large magma fall that is pouring over the top of the fortress's second story Ooh. and completely encompasses that side. It splits and divides towards the center. Uh, a larger fall towards the front of the fortress and a thinner one towards the very back. Yeah, let's go towards the front. All right, creeping, yeah. creeping back. Creepy, creepy, creepy towards the thin Creeps one. Creeping, creeping. Okay. We're stealth still? Or? Yeah, we're all stealth. stealth. Yeah, yeah, you guys are all stealth still. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're 26. Okay. You don't need to check it again, you didn't tell us to. Well, I said I wanted to go back and <laughs> so, so you move ahead, the rest of the group, head to the front of, of this stream, and you can see the smooth wall with molten rock pouring down the side. You can see where portions of the stone have kind of been uh, gradually worn and melted by just the, the contact, and then built upon with more and more uh, cooled rock. It's this very kind of weird uh, clustered framing of cooled rock around this fall. Um, you see no doorway as the actual magma is pressing directly against the side of the stronghold. And I want to see if I can um, tell if anything, I know this all looks natural, but perhaps something is is fashioned to look such, I want to see if I can figure that out. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation. Uh, la 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 la. 18. 18? Best that you can find looking around? <laughs> You cannot see anything before you, any sort of mechanism, any sort of hidden button, any sort of lever or additional doorway. It's just a solid wall with the two 
magma flows. Right. Can I, I double back to oh. the underdog expert? And bring right, right, right. Assistant. Can I come up and look and see if I can um, see any tracking? Um, if there's any footprints around a certain area around see this? See if you can find a false door or something. Yeah. All right, go make an investigate check. Do it. Wait, I thought it was behind. Nope. It's okay, no, 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 I get an advantage. It was a one. Shush. All right, that's not a one. Is it an <laughs> investigation? Yes. 22. Okay. Looking at this uh, the side of this fortress, you can see what amounts to a very, very slight raise in the smooth flow of the magma. It seems to pour down most of the stronghold and then just slightly bulge out. And then it pulls, and you can now have you better, better close so you can see where it runs off to. It continues into a stream following the edge of the giant cavern wall that's curving down and to the left into a far deeper uh, cavern. You can see the entire cavern almost like a giant U. Uh, it's, it's open, and the entire thing kind of banks around it and goes deeper still. You guys have made it to the far back wall. Ah, the chicken has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically. Metaphorically yes. and, <laughs> and actually. But yeah, uh, from what you can see, there is a slight raise beneath the magma. Okay. <clears throat> is it, does it look like it's safe to bring everybody up here, or does it seem like anything's around that can see us? Uh, Anything looking from above? Or? You glance up and you can see there are two Durgar perched up on the edge oh, of the first floor, right on the parapet. You can see there's all these jagged, kind of obsidian stone, almost teeth sticking out of the very top edge of the wall. Um, and you see the patrols just walking, keeping an eye out. They have crossbows on their arms. Uh, a couple other just have javelins at the side. And they're just doing slow patrols. Okay. We need to, uh, grab some double o se to we need super, to double super 007 super sniper them out. Yeah. I can handle this, I think. You can? I think I can get us into that trap door. I, Do you have something I, I that can pull right. it towards you? No, no, no. Can you redirect the magma flow around that bulge with your, uh, can't you move rocks? Or, I can. So you could create a, like a little Ooh. lip for it to go around? I was thinking I could either, that's not a bad idea, or I could, it's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> 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 that <laughs> fucking teamwork. Um, or I could, or I was thinking I could cool off the magma mm. and like we could break it. Oh yeah, maybe you can move it away and then cool it. Well, first we got to take out and care of the guys on the on the roof. Are, are they back with us? Are they still stealthing in front? Are we? Uh, they're still stealthing in front, and they've. Oh. You guys, you came back to the group. Yeah, I yeah. guess we came back to the group and told them about what's going on. Okay, we can. Me and Pike can take out the guys on the on the roof. Oh yeah. really? Can we <laughs> yeah. go? Wait, but remember. he's got sneak attack. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm thinking that the two hundred feet up. But we could bird out and drop. Me. Yeah, if Keyleth can bird up, or you can go up on a flying cockroach. I can take Pike, and we can do it. All right, are oh they not? God. Are they not able to be shot out? Just can you not? Arrow I can. Them I out? can try to arrow them out too. She can hit her too, but the I'll chance that she could them. take them up both out at once. Maybe you should go up and I'll arrow one and you. Won't you let the? I'm just afraid if you go up there that you're gonna alarm yourself to other people. Is the, is the lava flow making making noise? Uh, very very yeah. subtle, like pops and hisses. But other than that, it's pretty quiet. It's not like the so not the roaring sound. Of the water. No, no, it's a I slow, gradual pour. Does anybody have a mute spell of some kind? Mute, as in I mean, cast that phrase. There's silence or yes. a person. As in silence, noise. Wait. No, I'm not moving down. I have. Okay, wait. David Norris? Thank you, David Norris. Thank you, David Norris. David. 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 Chicken is delicious. I love Dave the elephant sent it. Thank you, Dave. I'm just gonna not let you see me eat it. Uh, <laughs> um. Oh my god, her her mouth opens up and tentacles come out. And <laughs> stuff it in. It's really scary. <clears throat> um. Sorry, what are we doing? That's a good question. What are you doing? Um. We gotta take out the fuckers on this right. on that roof. Oh, do you want to try to shoot them out, or do you want me to take Pike and fuck their shit up? Do I that. mean, if you can fling them <laughs> off the roof, that'd be That's awesome. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, can we, can do we see anyone we're else? We're gonna fling them off like, the roof. Can I see Durga from any other? Uh, yep, pressure's on. Perch. <laughs> uh, from your yeah. current from position, current you're position. up against the wall now. No, you're right. You can, I mean, you can if back away and take a more of a case on if you want. And then I can just pick one up with my eagle talents and like in the lava they go. This seems dangerous and reckless. It but does seem very dangerous and reckless. Do it. Mm. So I don't know if it brings attention. Are, 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 I'm not in my past. We just have to be fast. 
Can we really not talk without Trace up? I'm going with you guys. Just keep going and, uh, it's been over an hour. We've killed nothing. Uh, We've killed the, all, so far, only the two of them have really approached the stronghold. You guys have stayed back behind. A vampire already blood. So you can all try, in theory, if you all manage to stealth past them. Wait, what? Uh, oh my God. Here's my plan. Okay. I'll take Pike up there. We knock those fuckers off. Super easy. Yep. <laughs> Grog runs out and brains them the second they hit the ground. I approve of this plan. I'll fall in the lava. Yeah, they'll fall in a lava pit. Just shove Maybe. them off the side. Maybe. I don't know where they're going to fall. Well, just okay, do it. Okay, well, they lava pit. We've got Grog. I'm just saying right now. Just be ready to let us know if um. I'm going to be reading this book. <coughs> um, well, in form. He's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging by Keyleth oh in God, case so shit stupid. goes south, then we're going oh, up, right? Jump on my back. What you got? Girl. What you got, Pike? Yeah, girl. Can Give you me help the flying carpet just in case I need I can to get you up I'll there. What you can you do when we're up there? There's something I've been wanting to do. That. Yeah. Oh my do you say, this is fascinating. We're doing it. That would you say to get the magic carpet? Um, Please, can I have uh, the I'm, I'm going to just look at the the guard's pattern of movement. Are they staying in position? Are they walking around? Are they talking to Ooh, each other at all? Um, as you watch, take a moment, still from, from the far back position. Watch the two up there kind of come together. They chat for a second. Then a third one appears and comes. Oh, and one of them rotates out for the one that just arrived. Okay. They, were, they, were they both kind of sit there, keeping an eye. One of them Are they clean close to the each bone. other? Well, they're about 20 feet from each other along the uh, top of the parapet. You said 20 feet? 20 feet. There's three yes. two. Huh? There's three up there. Now there's no, three. no. Two. Uh, one came to swap out okay. the other. Oh my gosh. May I be saying I have been known to climb a few things in my time. If you need an extra. All right, let's do it. I'll see. Are you coming to bike? Yeah. I'm. I'm. A, I'm a coming up there to kill some. Some things. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any climbing gear? In? I have. I have a grappling hook. The oh ocean God, has changed you. Stupid. Okay, uh, they're they're standing twenty feet oh, apart. Yeah, I'm gonna watch this all radius. Now. Yeah, we, me and you get ready to shoot. I'm 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 waiting. In the case. range or Sniper. radius? So wait, who's all going? Uh, no, Just range is how far away from you they are, and the radius Ow. is the point. No, I mean a range of a spell. Is far from me? Are they and you're yes. gonna bring them Got up it. if you can. Are Where's they carpeting? We're good. How are you going up? Fly on me. Scanlan, how are you how are you going up? Eagle carpet. No. Eagle. What? The climb of that I shit, can, aren't I you? can get there. I what? can get there. Like that. We're good. Beautiful. <laughs> do it, Tom Cruise. All right. Cruise. Do it. All right. You Mission ready? Impossible. Do you know what you're going to do up there? Not really, but let's just wing it. I'm going to try to knock them both off in one in one blow, but you if I miss, right you got to take okay. one. Okay. Yeah, All right. Board. I can okay. take one if you can take one. Okay. All right. Morning star with the oh my God. Right. Rog, you ready to kill? Yeah. Be yeah. okay. okay. really quiet while you're fighting. Try to take him out before they hit. I kind of want to. Sure, but. I can't believe little people. You know why? Because I need someone with me and I can only take her because that's the only other one who will fit through the dimension door with me. Go! The dimension door? Yes, we're going to go through a dimension door. I can take one person of my height or smaller. All right. So I will take Pike. So you reach over, hold on to Pike gently, give her a little wink. Oh my gosh. And suddenly... We're going to try to appear between the two of them. Exactly between the two of them. Okay, so... You feel the sudden rush of air and it, the surrounding atmosphere of you goes from that uncomfortable warmth to a sudden freezing cold as your vision goes black and all you can see is Scanlan looking at you with this heightened grin as he's muttering these arcane incantations under his breath. An instant later, you guys are both standing at the top of the wall with both of the Duragar, one kind of facing away, one looking really surprised at the fact that you guys both appeared there. You have a surprise round. What are you doing? I cast Thunder Wave and blast out from, from where I'm standing between them, 15 feet in either direction. Okay. So they're so. both 10 feet and 10 feet away from me. Okay, what's your what's your save? Uh, uh, but a, a 19. But a quiet Thunder 19. Wave, right? Really All quiet right. Thunder, thunder wave. clap is loud. Thunder All right. wave is different. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'm pretty sure it's still Thunder. It's, so, th Thunder Wave. We can get up real fast just to make sure that sure. this is like this plan. Thunder makes a noise. This right? is a triumph. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a note here. Huge success. success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, you're we go. I don't think it's loud. We're total fake geeks. I don't think it's loud. We're total fake geeks. I don't think it's loud. I don't think it's loud. We're total fake geeks. Such fake geeks. Oh, no. Oh, well, it's a wave of thunderous force. <laughs> right. But it doesn't say sound. It just says thunderous I would say thunderous force. force. It isn't a thunderclap, but it will make. Some noise. Okay, fine. So keep that in mind. So, <laughs> so as, as you guys appear, you release Pike, you bring your arms up and slam your arms kind of in a downward motion. As you do, there is a dull flash of light and a boom 
for a burst sound that emanates from you. I say, oh. ooh, light. Both of the Duragar, <laughs> the one who sees you, who's bringing up his crossbow to fire, gets impacted and blown off the side of the wall. The one facing away gets blown up towards, slams into the side of the wall right at the edge, and then topples over the side. Will Both screen? plummeting over. Oh! The brief Wilhelm screen. You're standing there, you watch oh. this happen. I didn't have to do anything, Scanlan! Make out with me. <laughs> <laughs> we're alone. It's super romantic. I just killed two fucking big girls. Oh, no. It's now or never, baby. <laughs> 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 well, let's just yes. wait till we're out of danger. It's wait. Real romantic. But that was really <laughs> hot. It was really hot, right? It Come was. On. Just a little something, but something. Let's just. So sexy. As this <laughs> is happening. <laughs> oh, shit. Both of the Durgar come plumbing off the side of the wall. One uh, manages to kind of loosely break his fall, but the full oh, uh, 25 foot fall yeah, right. he takes. I rage. <laughs> okay, uh, there's one that lands uh, just to the side of the magma pool that's forming. He took some damage from the fall and is like <laughs> trying to get back up. He fell hard on one arm. The other one that's far further away from the magma, the one that saw you, managed to. Reduce its damage a little bit because it was aware that at least you were there. Um, looks like it took some damage, not too much. It is maybe ten feet from you. Um, <laughs> as he's trying to get back up, he looks up and sees you charging towards him, Grog, raging. Go ahead and make your two attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nineteen hits. <laughs> and nineteen again. Both hit. Go ahead and roll damage. I'm going to get some damage. Yeah. Yeah. 17, okay. and 19. So as he gets up, he goes back for his warhammer. Before he has a chance to, you cleave off one arm <gasps> and send the axe right into the center of his torso, Holy. silencing him in an instant. He slightly spreads the wound with this gurgling sound, and you just have to kind of like kick him off the edge of your axe. Yeah, I tilt him towards the pillar to spray the pillar with his gore. I'm like, I can make one too. <laughs> <laughs> I run across to the other one. Thorn whip him from across the lava pool. Okay, you have to jump over the lava to do that. Because he's on the side you guys are on. Oh. Uh, well, then is there anyone on that, the other side? Is he already dying or no? Oh, wait, he's, he's on the, the same lava? side. He's on the same side as you. He's hurt. We run up is and he kick him in the lava. Yeah, he's in the I, process of standing up. We yeah. just run and kick him in the lava. Yeah, I just run and push. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So I use start. pushing <laughs> attack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you go go, go ahead and roll athletics. This is the meanest thing I've ever done. <laughs> no, no, remember you killed that kid one time. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's some dark shit. <laughs> That's some dark shit. It's a long story. Oh my god. Remember you <laughs> killed that kid one time? Two and a half years in and Keoth has just learned our names. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got them for you. I got them for you. I have your name written down. I'm Vex, okay? What? No. No, 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 that is not true. No. No. Uh, so as the, as the the, the terrible blood spray occurs across the uh, the, the nearby pillar on Grog's side, the other Durgar is getting up with his crossbow, trying to get it ready. You rush <laughs> forward. Uh, <laughs> I go ahead, roll athletics. Oh, come on! How oh, she does no. this, I notice everything, and this I sit down that kid. <laughs> and turn to the next chapter in my book. Okay. We had it coming. This is quite a good read. Oh, uh, could it be worse. Uh, Fourteen. Uh, that's okay, he rolled a one. Oh, yes! So as the Duragar is getting up, he goes, you just run up and poof, and he falls back into the back. He starts giving a horrible, painful scream oh, no, as he's yeah. essentially like flailing in the magma, melting. Someone shoot him in the mouth. I say, shh, 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 and I, I do the, um, I, I wind down to like push him under the lava. Okay, so so as he's screaming, your wind wall shoves him further into the magma. As he's screaming, cooling the magma around him as the rock cracks around him into black rock. His face still visible over the surface, going and this like horrible, almost Han and Carbonite type look at the top of the magma pool. You could just one up to Grog. Right? Magma's awesome. <laughs> as, fresh, as fresh magma now begins to pull over the cool, covering his face, you step away. Um, Piss on the body. I never knew. I never knew you were an artist. <laughs> However, the, the subtle sound of the thunder wave oh, and no. then the horrible screams of pain. You can hear footsteps coming towards the wall edge where both you and Pike are currently on. What are you going to well, do? Can you turn yourself into? Is, is there like a door or something? Not from your current position. No, you're just you're just like on a, a, a five foot ledge, 
of the second of story. Of the fortress. Yeah. I saw how, it's how not a standalone it? tower. It's, mm -mm. it's part of a large... This is on the, the lip of the wall. How far of a jump down is it? Uh, it's about 25 feet. What, am I too excited about it? Should we Turn yourself down into a guard, make it seem like everything's okay. the same thing, get us down. America's jungle, I'm not dimension door. Unless you want to stay and fight. You got 20 seconds. Wait, what's happening? Turn into a door guard! Turn into a door guard! Kaka! Act like you're a door guard! Say everything's okay! Get out of here. Look over it up. Okay, we're gonna dimension door out. Okay. So you grab her, <laughs> back down to the bottom. That's All right. Cast that shit. They reappear in the bottom. Um. Um. Are you done? Okay. 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 I I cast uh um uh, uh wall stone, but like right over top of where I see that lip. But I don't I don't want to bring it out far. Just like half seas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just the, the the magma? Just, Just the, the tip. tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. All right. So, so as you so guys hear like the bottom, flow, oh, smart. Here's the wall. I wanted to go. You guys okay. hear footprints uh, along the wall. They don't seem to have seen you yet. At which point, there's this <coughs> sound of shifting rock. A giant stone wall juts out the side of the fortress, right where the uh, lava pool was pouring over the side. As it does, the lava bin pull, pulls on top of the wall and is kind of offset, leaving a small gap where you guys can try and squeeze through. You can see right underneath where it was, there is a stone doorway. It does, oh, does not appear to have a handle or anything. It's just a stone door. How do we get in? Tiberius, in? fly up there, quick. Quick. What? Stop eating chicken and fly up that door. <laughs> oh. Can he get the chicken? <laughs> <laughs> um. What's going on? <laughs> There's a magic doorway up there. There's no. I don't see any handles yeah, on the door. It's, it's, it's right underneath the lava. It's, it's, yeah, bottom, it's, it's, oh, it's on the ground. Yeah. Basically, oh. she she moved the she put the stone wall out. It's right there. We can walk up to it and take a look. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, that was good. There I'm gonna do an arcana Wait, you check. Can push it. Do I have advantage? Uh, no. 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 All right, take a look. It? He's doing an arcana check. Frog, uh, kill it. Kill it. Twenty-two. Punch the door. Twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Okay. As you guys are inspecting this. In the time that you've taken to do this, right. both the Duragar on the top are, have seen you, mm. uh, never, seen what's happening, seen. and are both taking shots at you. Oh shit! No. Oh, no. I was waiting for that anyway. So okay. I'm, I'm gonna... He was. So as they appear on the top, uh, you guys who have your arrows, uh, arrow and gun at the ready, both take a shot, and then they get a retribution shot. Keyleth, let's what? go up. Go up. Up to them. Wait. Let me see how they fare. That's All right, about so six the door seconds. is not magical. 65, 65. It is a mechanism of some kind. I rolled a 65. Holy shit, you're a deity! I'm amazing! <laughs> um, Max. 25. Pay attention. 25. The door is mechanical. Person. It is uh, not magical. You get two attacks each. That is how we two. open it. Okay. So, oh, no magic. Um, I hit uh, a 23. 23 hits. Go ahead and roll second. Okay. Hit, uh, roll damage. 18 roll, roll, is the second roll one. Roll both attacks just to. 18 is the second. Hits as well. Okay. I, I, my both attacks, I have to reload for my second. Oh right. Oh, is this with your with the bad? Oh, I got the big gun out. Got the bad news out. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. Okay, so you fire and then reload. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so roll ahead and roll damage. Okay, I'm using my uh, fire bow. Okay, so use the fire bow string. As you knock your first arrow, oh you burst into flames as it leaves your fingers. Oh. Oh. Seven damage. Seven damage. Okay. I so much. No, I'm sorry. Oh my God, got me right uh, in the ear. Twenty damage okay. on the first attack. Okay. First two uh, rolls. Thirteen on the second. Okay, so uh, as both are going out with their with their crossbows uh, ready to go, first one the bad news <laughs> with a cacophonous echoing gunshot that within this cavern definitely carries some sound to it. Um, and some to some degree, surprise may be a little harder to find going forward. Oh, um, we, that was already they were yeah. ready to type, start shooting at us. Yes. Uh, however, the, the shot hits the guy in the shoulder, knocks him off balance for a second. Not enough of a wound to prevent his next action. You, however, place one arrow into the other guy's shoulder, uh, getting he's dropped the crossbow. As he goes to reach for his other weapon, the other one just right at the bottom of his throat, out of the back of his head, yeah. and just drops below the wall. Awesome. Uh, the other one does get a crossbow shot off at you, Percy. Uh, that is a 23 versus armor class. Uh, that... You take nine points of piercing damage okay. as the bolt just shoot, streaks you across your front of your torso, uh, passes through, thankfully, but you do feel there's a wound that's slowly turning warmer beneath your armor. Can I shoot at the other one? Uh, well, that's been the round now. Uh, you guys have been inspecting the door. The door is not magical. There's some sort of contraption that opens it from the inside. Right, I'm getting my picks out and seeing if I can figure out. 
somehow way too easy. Go ahead and uh, make a check with your uh, deep source. Deep source. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Ooh. So you take a second. You but can I find that the uh, the contraption that holds the store in place definitely is on the other side. It's a series of winches <laughs> and the chain pull. Uh, you find that there's one slight gap where you manage to hook one of the chains, pull out ever so slightly, and you know with a strong yank from a strong person, you could probably pull it out from the outside. So oh, there's a part that if I ask Grog person. over to pull. <laughs> Oh, girl, grab here. this. Uh... I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me and Pike are on this. <laughs> okay, so Groggy reach I'll over, assist. you grab the chain, and Pike grabs onto the back of you, and both of you pull. Give it a good heap, ho! Go ahead, make a strength check with advantage. Oh, yeah. Uh, 23? 23. As you pull, you hear the grinding of this chain against the stone. And you can see the actual door begin to rise upward this way. Yes. You can see now with this door. It's a DeLorean. Is, yeah, essentially. <laughs> when it opens up, it What's moves that? the magma out of the way. That's how this construct is used as an exit. It's what I mentioned before. It's, it's supposed to be an exit uh, for the royal individuals of the stronghold. It only opens up partway, however, because the stone wall currently blocks the rest Ooh. of its movement. Oops. However, okay. you can still move through it. Um, we can't leave this Dorgar behind, though. We've got to take mm-hmm. him out. Yes, there is one Dorgar still there. Uh, so that's been all of your guys' actions for bringing back Pike. You haven't gone yet. Okay. Um, uh, Kill if you've gone. Yeah. So the only one left to take action is. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, was, he checked uh, the doorway. Checking out the door. Oh, right. Where's he at? Uh, he's up on the top of the wall, about twenty-five feet from. Could you. I create a a uh, I want to a spiritual weapon, like a poisonous lasso, <laughs> and like and then like put him down into the lava. Oh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so. A lariat of truth? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, alright then. So, using your spiritual weapon, you, you take a moment, you grasp your, uh, your, your Saren Ray uh, holy symbol around your neck, and as you pull your hand away from the symbol, you see this, this kind of glowing uh, celestial rope extends out of nowhere. Yeah. You begin to spin your fingers, and it, on its own, it begins to swirl and swirl. You then throw your hand forward and on its own cascades upward towards the edge of the wall. Go ahead and roll an attack roll. An attack roll, okay. Yeah. Which is... Uh, Using your spell modifier as the attack roll. Wow. Ten. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't no good. Total of ten? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you roll? I rolled uh, uh, a two, and then I had a uh, plus eight. Okay, so uh, the uh, <laughs> that ain't no good. The, the celestial lasso. Um, it's a good idea, though. Which, Such which, a good is, which idea. is it? You don't get the feeling poison was something you could really muster based on your your deity's central good. I was just kidding. Talent. I was just getting a little crazy with ideas. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, However, as as it heads over the wall, you see it does not find purchase on the Duragar. Instead, it finds purchase on part of the wall. Yeah, fuck. Um, Poisoning the wall, effectively. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's that not wall poison property. Effectively. Uh, yeah. so. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. Unfortunate, bad roll. Uh, okay, that brings you to the top of the round order. Round order. Oh, right. um, I believe at the top we have... Uh, Mr. Me? Yes, Mr. Me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh. Uh, I'll do, um, <clears throat> we're still trying to get that fucker up, up uh-huh. yes, yes, he's on the roof, right? Tell people. We got almost nothing. So, uh, I'll just do, um, uh, uh, I, 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 can I, can I, can I summon an unseen servant to push him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Come That's on. a good idea. Yeah. Okay, we can yeah. give it a shot. Oh. Roll high. Okay, roll high. So, I, I don't so have any ranged weapons. Yeah, roll twenty. So you you, you, you conjure an unseen servant. Mark, mark off your spell use. I look at it and I go, "Oh, Monty's cousin." Uh, you see a, a slight shimmer of of ethereal energy behind the Duragar. It's going to attempt to shove him. It isn't, unfortunately, on its own extremely strong. It's mainly meant as an aid. However, it is possible. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Athletic? Not your not your athletics. Just make a d20 oh, roll. Oh, just a normal athletics. Twenty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a five. So. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your athletics? We're really rolling well tonight. You hear a, you hear a ting <laughs> sound as the um, 
the Durgar's armor is given a hefty slap, but no apparent <laughs> force is placed upon its a body. Hefty slap. <laughs> Thank you, Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> but is he confused? Uh, a little bit. Okay. But not enough to not be loading his crossbow for a second shot. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> good, good thinking on We're that a point. A party of seven people, just like ah, ah you, <laughs> you. Cat in a tree. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> How do we deal with this? All right. As my, so. and, and I'm gonna just uh, give a little inspiration to Vax. Mm. That's Laura, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's All inverted. Right. That's what so, I always. So D8 nice inspiration nice. died to you is <laughs> hums a little tune under his breath. Nice. Um, <laughs> you're up. Nope. Oh, I should I attack him. All right. Pew pew. Pew pew! Yeah, this, is, this is good. It's at one. Damn one. it! What is wrong with us? Holy shit. So what are we doing? My first attack is a serious fail. My second attack, though, is a 25. That hits. That's okay. Okay. good. So the first one, you pull back, and as you pull back, the actual arrow snaps. You're you like, almost shot me! Ow, oh, that hurt my arm so bad! Yeah, you're gonna have a little rash there probably yeah. tomorrow. Great. Eight? Eight damage. All right, so your second arrow manages to find uh, its mark as it sticks pretty close to where the first arrow hit, uh, um, or where, where, where oh, yeah. he was shot from the bad news. Uh, the door guard kind of shrugs it off angrily and aims his crossbow from once with Percy, now on to you. <laughs> it's getting its shot at you. Yeah. Uh, that is a 17 versus armor class? Yep. Nope. Yep. All right. Um, so you manage to just dodge out of the way. You hear it whiz past your ear. Uh, that brings us to, let's see, let's go to Percy. Take one more shot at him. Redemption, Percy. Come on, buddy. Kill this guy. Get it. Uh, this last is longer than most of us fight. Yeah, <laughs> uh, 18. 18 hits. And it's, come on, die. Come on, Percy. Right in the belly button. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's pretty. That's uh, 25 points of damage. Thank Yay. you. Yeah, so with the Bye. second, you, you pull out one of your, your custom-made uh, nasty looking bullets, load it back into the bad news, you pull it back, aim up and fire. And once again, you guys are seeing this weapon up close again. With each fire, it takes all of his physical body to not be blown off his feet That's with each time it fire. <laughs> A plume of white and kind of uh, ash-like smoke comes shooting out the side of the weapon. Uh, you all, the nearby, you almost have to close your ears instinctually from the loudness of the shot. However, the Duragar at the top of the wall, you see what where his head once was, just <laughs> across the wall behind it. Oh, love bad news. Let's move quickly. Let's get in the door. I think they I heard us. I go, I, think they the, us. I go in the door. What kind of a okay. Going into the door. Yeah, Thanks. we all go in the door. All right, so all of you have made your way into the doorway of... Can Trink it fit? Trink it can fit. Trink it can fit with you, Good. yes. It's just strong. barely. It's like... It's just like barely. barely. It's wrong uh, can fit, Trink it can fit. Trink it It's the one you don't suit. Indeed. Oh no, we can't see it. All righty, so... You guys, make your way. Are we crafting? Whoa! Tiny, wow. Whoa. tiny little room. We are all very, very crammed in Into to get anywhere. Feels feels like an intermission room. Yes. Essentially. Oh. So, yeah. so, or at least remove your, your a bathroom your break room. room. Yes. This we could all relieve ourselves in, in this room. room. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There. You guys all slowly push into this. Uh, the storage room, it's very musty. It hasn't been seen in use in quite a while. Um, in fact, you can see a little bit of mold is growing on the side of one of the barrels Ooh, in the corner. Dink. There is a doorway <laughs> that is closed on the opposite side of this wall. And from what you can see, there is a stairway that curves upward to the second floor. Uh, guys, I'm sensing a lot of purple and brown construction paper here. <laughs> <laughs> I am as well, Scandin. That's your favorite terrain, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> 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 Can we take an awesome. intermission break at this moment? I think as you guys just entered the stronghold, we'll take this as an intermission break. So, uh, take about 10, 10, a little over 10 minutes, we'll watch the rest of the videos here uh, again, and we'll return as the party has just Stop now that. entered the Emberhold itself. Okay, so. right. quick oh, wait, quick oh, announcement. Oh, Zach matches the construction paper. What? You do! <laughs> 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 um, so guys, uh, before we go on intermission, I wanted to bring up one more time a 26 LA, which is oh, the charity. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, critical Role is supporting. Um, do you want to give a brief? 
Yeah, a portion of our proceeds or whatever our donations are go to A26LA and they are an after school tutoring program that helps children between the ages of 5 and 18, mainly with literacy and creative writing and they have this awesome program where it's a young authors uh, thing. You can buy all their books and their stories and you should totally check them out. Sweet. Fantastic. Awesome. Yes. So guys, we, yes. we can spam you with that link in the chat room if you want to support a charity for Critical Role. Uh, we also still have a giveaway at 2,150 subs, which is a picture of the entire Critical Role cast. They've Thank all you. signed, and it's really cool, and we'll show you guys that again later, but we'll go Indeed. ahead and roll those videos for you guys again. Roll yeah. that so we can squeeze the, oh, the intro video. The too, intro right? again. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do awesome. That. All right, cool guys. We'll see you in a little bit. What is he doing? Pike grew up in the outskirts of town, near the Bramble Road. Her ancestors were a family of deep gnomes with quite an unfavorable reputation. Thievery, destruction, and trickery left them with the curse of the last name Trickfoot. Saren Ray, the goddess of healing and redemption, had other plans for Pike's great-great-grandfather Wilhand, who left his family at a young age after a dream. A dream that changed the course of the Trickfoot family. Wilhand devoted his life to Saren Ray and pledged from then on that him and his family would live a life of service and devotion. As a child, Pike seemed to have an affinity to heal. Whether it was animals, people, or even flowers, she felt she had a purpose in making things whole that had once been broken. She studied and learned the ways to heal through divine magic. She lived a peaceful life, quiet and simple, until one day, Wilhand was captured and almost killed by a group of Goliath barbarians. One of the Goliaths took a stand against the murder of the innocent gnome, and he himself was beaten, bloodied, and left for dead, abandoned by his herd. Wilhand went to Pike for help. She prayed and healed this barbarian as best she could, bringing him back to life. When he awoke, she discovered his name was Grog Stonejaw. After that, they were the best of friends, a rather unlikely pair. Little did she know that in a few years' time, Grog would soon return the favor and bring her back from the clutches of death. After being killed in battle, Pike felt angry. She wanted to be stronger so that it would never happen again. She spent four months at sea, training with the men and women aboard a ship called the Broken Howl. Gripping her holy symbol in one hand and her morning star in the other, this time, Pike is ready. Right, listen up. If you have ale, then you have a friend in Grog Strongjaw, a Goliath of towering height and size. This barbarian has an appetite for the two great loves in his life, combat, women, and ale. <laughs> Wait. Easily the brains of the group, Grog is often consulted for his vast knowledge of shapes, colors, and <laughs> shiny things. Also ill. In his early years, armed with his two-handed great axe, Grog often enjoyed proving his might amongst the ranks of his family's wandering herd. But after coming upon an unsuspecting elderly gnome in the woods, he objected to the killing of such an innocent life. A creature of impulse. Grog felt only pity for this, <laughs> this terrified little thing. And his disobedience cost him dearly. Beaten bloody and banished by the herd leader, his uncle Kevdak, Grog was abandoned and left to die. Exiled from his herd, it was then that the relative of the very gnome he fought to save, saved him. It was the kindness of a gnome cleric named Pike that healed Grog, bringing him back from Death's Edge. And they have remained close friends ever since. Most nights, Grog can be found challenging entire taverns to wrestling matches, <laughs> or, or accompanying Scanlan to the nearest house it, where you pay for lady favors. <laughs> oh, also ale. A first impression of Keyleth would leave you with little information on the half-elven druid. You might even think that her social awkwardness due to her sheltered upbringing is kind of sweet. <laughs> of course, it would be unwise to underestimate her based on first impressions. 
Under that unintimidating petite frame is a vicious beast waiting to be unleashed, whose natural powers have made even the fiercest of champions pee their pants. Literally. <laughs> Born to the air tribe of the Ashari people, Keyleth was raised with a deep love of nature and the elemental magics. It is her people's inherent duty to protect the delicate areas in Tal'Dorei, where the four elemental planes begin to bleed with this realm. Since she was a little girl, she had quite a knack for air manipulation and bee-shaping abilities. Well, if you consider kittens and flying squirrels to be little beasts, which I do. <clears throat> Anyways, it wasn't long before the headmaster of the tribe, her father, Corin, realized her true prodigious abilities, and she was inveterated to secede him as the next headmaster. Just like that. Her jovial childhood was stripped and replaced with endless spell memorization, teachings from ancient traditions, and exceedingly high expectations. Every druid leader-to-be must embark on a journey to seek out the sister tribes in order to introduce and establish respect amongst the fellow headmasters. They call this the Aramente, or Noble Odyssey. When her father felt she was ready, he set her on the path to truly discovering herself, not knowing when or if she will ever return. As she hiked down the mountain towards Stilbin, she meditated on the task ahead. Part of the Aramente is proving yourself a strong warrior, a valiant protector, and a wise and compassionate leader. With this knowledge, one thought plays in repeat in her mind. Is she even worthy? Percy was the third of seven children, born to a noble family who lived far to the north, in the ancient castle of Whitestone. With so many siblings to share the burdens of lordship, Percy turned his attentions to the sciences, engineering, and naturalism. One day, a mysterious couple named Lord and Lady Briarwood came to court. During a feast held in their honor, the Briarwoods violently took control of the castle, killing or imprisoning everyone who would stand in their way. Percy awoke chained in the dungeon, only to be freed by his younger sister. Together they fled, chased by the Briarwood's men. As they ran, Percy's sister took several arrows to the chest and fell. Percy kept running, eventually jumping into a freezing river and floating unconscious to freedom. He did not remember waking up on a fishing boat. He barely remembered the next two years as he slowly made his way as far south as possible. Then one night, Percy had a dream. A roaring cloud of smoke offered him vengeance against those who destroyed his family. When he awoke, Percy began to design his first gun. Oh, you haven't heard of Scanlan Shorthalt? Well, gird your loins, ladies, because he has his eye on you. A talented musician, master of disguise, and dashingly handsome in his own mind, Scanlan sings songs almost as much as he sings his own praises. Born a poor gnome, Scanlan used his endless charm and soaring tenor voice to croon for coin and support his single mother. One day he was discovered by a half-orc promoter and joined Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe, where he learned the ways of the world and honed his skills as a bard extraordinaire. A loner much of his life, Scanlan has never quite come to terms with the violent death of his mother at the hands of a goblin invasion. While his years on the road provided many, shall we say, educational experiences with the opposite sex, deep down Scanlan yearns for the one thing he's never known, the true love of a fellow gnome. Still, Scanlan considers himself a lover first, performer second, and fighter distant third. On the battlefield, he'll support his allies, but rarely draws blood, unless it's to protect fellow gnome, Pike. Count on Scanlan for a hearty laugh, a rollicking song, and a twinkle in his eye that melts hearts and makes the females swoon. <laughs> Greetings and salutations. I am Tiberius Stormwind. I hail from a town called Tyrix, located in the heart of Draconia, born from a politically respected family. At the age of 15, I succeeded in passing the Sorcerer's Rite, showing prodigy-like control of my magic. The judges and the Draconian High Council were amazed at how powerful my spells were for how long I had been training. At 20 years old, I was the youngest appointed member of the Magic Guild in Draconian history. For the next few years, I almost went mad from the malaise of being a guild member as it's rather boring. However, 
One day I happened upon a chamber, unused for quite some time. In the room were stacks of books and maps of the surrounding cities and areas around the known world. For months I would frequent the chamber and learned of artifacts from legend. After a long period of research, I made a list of artifacts that caught my eye. I brought these findings to the High Council and was told that all of the information in the chamber I stumbled upon was either believed to be fiction or unsolvable mysteries and hence were lost forever. I found those answers to be unacceptable. A year later I devised a ruse and managed to convince the City Council to lend support in me leaving Draconia on a mission of peace and diplomacy for the surrounding kingdoms, going from town to town and making friends and allies in and for the name of Draconia. Being a red dragon born, I had quite the task on my hands in that respect, but it was exactly what I needed so I could explore the world and find these artifacts, as I felt the truth was out there. Some may describe me as buffoonish, but I say poppycock to all that. I am much sharper than most give me credit for. I just don't pay attention to things sometimes. I've also been known to be rather cunning, loyal, uh, happy-go-lucky, and, well, dangerous. I can't help but show my true scales every now and then. But overall, I think I'm quite friendly for a dragonborn. Never entirely welcome in the company of elves or men, Vaxil Dan learned at a young age to skip past formality, preferring instead to invite himself in your door. Along with twin sister Vexalia, Vax was born by a chance encounter between elven royalty and human peasantry. Raised by their mother in their early years, the twins were eventually sent off to their father in the elven capital of Syngorn. But their cool reception among the elves there never warmed and their time in the capital didn't last. The siblings stole away one autumn night and set out on the open road. After a few years of wandering, they eventually decided to return to their mother and journeyed back to the lands of their youth. But instead of finding their childhood home, they returned to a pile of rubble. Their mother was gone, their home burned to ash, pressing the townspeople for answers. They learned of the day the dragon came. With their ties all severed, Vaxildan and his sister set out to find their fortune together in Taldore. An outsider since birth, Vax quickly learned to solve life's challenges in his own particular way, often by sidestepping them entirely. And when his knack for circumventing adversity isn't enough, the way of blades the elves schooled him in more than makes up the difference. Like so many half-elves, Vexalia has spent most of her life suffering the cool reception of a people who don't fully accept her. Born of a human mother and an elven father who only later in life took an interest in their existence, Vexalia and her twin brother Vaxildon quickly realized the only people they could truly rely on in this world were each other. It was at the age of ten when the two were taken from their mother and brought to live in Syngorn, the isolated elven city for which their father was an ambassador. He quietly took them in, but always kept an icy distance, and after too many years of disdainful looks, the pair decided to leave his indifference behind and set out on their own. Vax took to the cities, stealing small trinkets and learning the ways of the thief, while Vax kept to the woods. She preferred the isolation. Always the keen observer, she learned to hunt and to track, to spy and to shoot, and through a series of fateful events, earned herself a companion in the form of a bear. Her own stolen trinket, to fight alongside her and protect her fiercely. Also, he is adorable and gives expert massages.
like it. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, Critical Role. Ow! Uh, oh, and we had Orion. Holy hell. Ow. Are you okay? I'm fine. 2d6 damage to Tiberius. Uh, no. Uh, so, guys, for those who are keeping up, uh, two things, real fast. We want to thank uh, Jacqueline Laster for the awesome food she sent for us, guys. Wow. Oh, so Seriously, wow. thank you. A thank delightful, you. necessary treat after this game time. Amazing. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, for the uh, the uh, 2,150 subscriber mark, we're giving away this autograph photo of the yeah. cast. Yeah. That's so handsome. Um, who is it going to? Uh, some some lucky person in the chat room wants to be at 2,150. Oh. But uh, when that does happen, that will be going to you. Um, so, yes, returning to the also, game. Also, we've got these t-shirts, you should want them. Okay. <laughs> yes, we're going to we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna yeah, look into that. We're going to look into that. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to look into possibly finding a way to get these shirts to you guys in the next couple weeks. So. Only if you want them, though. It's going to be like a lot of work. We don't want to do it. We hate really doing the work. We're not here to work. <laughs> yeah, we're right. Where are we? We were just going in the door. Work is Indeed. too much. Want, you guys. Want. Yes, they want them. Cool. I guess you can have is good. All right, so the party had just managed to uh, not oh. quite so stealthily pry their way into the hidden entrance to the outside of the Duragar stronghold of Emberhold. Uh, they found themselves cramped into a very, very <laughs> tiny... Uh, essentially a storage room it's with nice. a stairway leading up and a closed doorway leading further into the stronghold. So, what is your preference? I think we should go through the door instead of going up. I agree. Because any prisoners are probably going to be I've kept at a low door. level. Can we quietly go in the door? Yeah, everyone's inside. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can we very stealthily try to ah, open it? Oh, 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 check the traps! Top, 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 top. Yes, uh, I'm going to uh, sniff the door a bit. Right. Uh, yeah, that's twenty. Twenty. All right. Just beautiful. Best you can tell, the uh, the door itself is locked, but is not trapped. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. Thieves tools out. Oh, that's an easy thirty. 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 Jesus. Which is good because it's a very, very intricate lock. Mm -hmm. There is a specific key, a single key that is designed for this lock that you gather is probably held by uh, King Murgle himself. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, King Myrtle? Miracle. Mer Miracle? Miracle. 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 And Miracle. his queen, Durarara. Queen. <laughs> 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 it's Ermagerd. Uh, it's Ermagerd. Queen Ermagerd. Ulara is her name. Queen Ulara. Uhara. Yes. Uhara. 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 <laughs> Uhara. No. Kumar. I don't know. What is okay. her name? Seriously. It's Ulara. It's Ulara. 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 Wait, Gerard and Ashnaga? Arms wise. Ubadra. I'm picking a lot. Right. I'm picking a lot. All right. Quiet. However, you do manage to find with a series of intricate, strangely constructed dwarven tumblers on the inside that each have a very strange rigid structure. <laughs> Hey. Please do that every time you pick a lock. Um, you manage to get the right sequence, and then with a slight <coughs> clicking sound, the door opens slightly on the inside. Leading into, uh, from what you can see, is a hallway that continues further down. It's about there. Where's the door? Where's the door? Did the, I just pick? The door that you picked if you wanted to walk through yes. is right there. It's naturally there. Okay. All right. So that other stuff is upstairs. Mm -hmm. all, all, all this is on the floor you're on. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to take uh, six or seven quiet steps forward, stealthily. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> 19 stealth. All right. Um, as he does this, I'm going to pull out my iron stone from my pouch. That's perfect. Okay. And let it. Good. All right, cool. We're all trapped in that room together, yeah. right? Yeah. You are probably. I fart. Drunk! <laughs> 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 Press the visitation and I <laughs> made quick wind gust and okay. just circulated okay. around the room. Oh, yeah. I blew it away! Do you want? I can blow it right up your nose, Max. <laughs> I won't go to you to you that I'm moving. I throw up in my mouth just see. a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Take a very quiet peek around the corner. All right, I'm, a, I'm having a peeky poo. Yes? Yes. yes. All right. Quiet. Uh, as you peek through, you can get a general idea of what looks to be some sort of a, 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 an empty storage room. Yes. Uh, 
a lot of materials have been moved out of it. It looks like uh, there are remnants of stone, uh, things that were used for construction that once were in this room that have been pulled out to build things, possibly moved as part of the war camp to start building some of the siege weapons okay. that you saw up above. Do I hear anything? Mm, not currently. Go ahead and roll a perception check. Yes. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's good, that's good. That's pretty good. 27. Listening, <laughs> you hear footsteps above. You hear uh, very, very faintly through the stonework about you know, 20 feet above you, <laughs> some footsteps moving above. Apparently there is some level of alert uh, on yeah. the second floor. Oh shit. Mm. We should I move fast. Why. Yes, Percy, I wonder why. We start why. getting out of the room. So <coughs> I'm looking outside. I, I, I go back to the door and just be like... Okay. All right, so I want to go further. For no doorway as of yet, correct? No doorway. If I go They're going to start way. coming down these this freaking way, stairs in the hallway this room. Comes to an end. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, well. All right. Well, then I'm going to peek into this door here. Here? It's open door. No, what's by right by the figure? This is the one you just looked into. That has this empty room. That oh, thank you, thank you. All right. Yeah. So then down the one hall. Down the one hall. Okay. Yeah. Look past here. There is a stairway that okay. descends downward. Down. Okay. Looking down. Help me. Looking down this hallway, you see what resembles, uh, well, there's a door to your left that's closed currently, mm-hmm. and it splits off into two directions, right and left. Alright, I don't even tell anyone, I just start to slink down the steps. Okay. They go down? Yes. Oh jeez Louise. Okay. Uh, put the throat in there. Um, you continue down the stairway, and as you slowly move around, you can see down towards the bottom a very, very faint bit of reddish glowstone light, mm-hmm. um, and a hallway that splits right and left. Right go and left. Downstairs. Uh, I go to the right. Okay. <coughs> We're you, getting bored. As you look past the right, you guys are all waiting in the room. You should just storm I out. get out. No, I get Start out. Start banging no. your weapons no, together. No, I come out. Two because you're taking two. <laughs> else? I, 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 I saunter about. Okay. <laughs> I'll head on out there. Uh, I go where Pike goes. We're just losing all attention span. Is that what's going on? We're just like wandering off. No, no, no. no. I stay, we stay in the area, but I, I wanted to check on my brother because I feel like he's taking a while. All right. Um, I was just going to check the door. As you move and, and kind of glance over, you can see there are two Duragar station on each side of the split hallways. Yes. One is a, there's a closed doorway to your right. Yes. And to the left, there's an open doorway that leads into a room. And that's when I went to the right? Uh, well, as soon as you went into the, where the division was, you turned to look to the right, and there was a the Duragar right. there and a Duragar on the left. Okay, I'm going to turn my chin over to the left and see what I see down there. There's a second Duragar that is currently sitting uh, in armor, weapon to its side, just kind of occasionally glancing, and you can hear every now and then, it sounds like a, a, a moan or like a, a slight whispering gurgle, and the Duragar will lean in. I should open there! <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go kill this guy. Um, you don't wanna tell us as I notice him going up, I'm gonna. Hey, Vax, what are you doing? <clears throat> uh, I'm killing someone. Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, Vax is going to go kill something. Uh, I'm going to sneak up on this door guard. Can okay, I make a stealth check? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, 19. 19? Alright. Let me go ahead and. <laughs> Oh no, look at this. This interesting. Jesus. Just like a magician, you just whip it out. That's yeah. what I'm doing. Oh god. Trying at least. There we go. Draw an extra hand. Just as you can do it, you can Watch do out. It. Oh, it's that book, it's the book. Oh, it is the book, isn't it? Stupid book. Looks <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> as you've made your way, here, Vex, you look to the right, there's the door guard here to the left, it's shouting into this room here. Do something! Missed entirely you you fucking you do something, He's please? right there on the side. Oh, there's yeah. one over there, there's one Jesus. over there. Jesus. Uh, there's two. Oh, shit. Um... But we all come slamming down in here. Yeah. Oh, you're uh, uh, so I sneak back up. Okay. And I uh, put a hand on my sister's shoulder and I give her a little come along motion and tell everyone else. 
I think you don't you need some grime? My mouth Kima. Mm. At everybody and then yeah. pulls, As you're doing this, you account. hear footsteps across the way echoing through the hallway, what sounds like a number of other foot patters heading through the halls <gasps> towards the front of the stronghold. Oh, I'm just right. pulling Vex down. Oh, the okay. Front of the front of the front. Not where we're at, right? Right. So Vex and Vax both disappear mm. off to the side down a, down a hallway. I, uh, before they leave, I just kind of like tap their shoulders and meditate and, and grant them guidance. Okay, you have one of them guidance because it's a concentration. Uh, Vex. Okay. That's me. Yes. <laughs> Did you mean to give it to him? Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. Bravo. So who gets who gets guidance? <laughs> the man one. <laughs> Vax. Vax. So I pull uh, my poison blade out and I pull uh, the keen dagger out. All right. Okay. And I take the keen dagger. So the one on the left is by the door, the one that muttered through the doorway, right? The one right here. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I give a little whoop, toss in my hand and throw it right at his neck. At the same time, attack. I reach out and go. Well, and then the other one, the poison it's one, not help. Yes. <laughs> towards the other. Okay, and <laughs> you are. And I was going to shoot at the other one. Like, okay, so go ahead and, and roll for back. this right here. Yes. <laughs> that is uh, seven, yes. 17 for me. 17 hits? 27. 27, all right. And then on the other guy, or should I just go ahead and attack? Uh, go ahead and go ahead and, and, and attack both. Okay, 17. So that's. Uh, and 25 from the second. So both You're both right. arrowed at the guy on the right. Stuba, one on each. Each. <laughs> you both. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So damage on the one on the left, which is sneak attack because he does not know you're there. Plus he's doing like eighty damage. Point. So uh, forty six with the uh, keen dagger on the guard at the door. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, so I was really useful. So the guy on on the left. As he's leaning back, he's getting angry with whoever's in that room. As he turns back to take his post again, and just gurgles, slumps to the ground. As he's slumping, an arrow goes. <laughs> 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 it's like a yeah. punctuation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, roll damage. And then the poison dagger goes funk. Well, I didn't roll to hit him. And are you using the poison effect on him? Yes. Okay. 15 on and the other guy. That yeah, is okay. a 19. Okay, that hits. And, uh, no, and this doesn't get sneak attack because no. I've already used that. Yes, so, so okay, so I made some noise hitting the first guy. Uh, seven plus the poison. Okay. So, what's the poison damage? The poison is a DC 15. Okay, he does not make his save, even though he's a okay. Durgar. I go running back up since Wait, I've already shot my arrows. And fast. I figure you've got this. We'll check one thing. <laughs> You could just so clear this whole place. Nine by points itself. of poison uh, on him. Okay. You have so, <laughs> an arrow you into his chest just as the poison blade makes contact. Uh, you can see him <coughs> kind of double over for a second, but uh, the hardy Duragar, once dwarf in form, seems to shrug off a lot of the poison's impact. Oh shit. He still is still dribbling yeah. a very heavy amount of deep crimson from his mouth, but Shut it's still up. like. <laughs> Looks over and sees you both in the hallway, and goes to reach for his warhammer and turn around towards the door behind him. Can I do another arrow at him? Uh, Can we roll for initiative at this point. At this point, you guys roll for initiative to see who goes first. Uh, I turn to Pike and say, "What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Where are they?" I don't know, but this book scan is incredible. I'm sure it is. It's all about like uh, ice. I, I, I read nonfiction. Let's head down there. I'm gonna I head down there. Oh, oh, careful, clanky. Alright. Oh. Uh, so the rest of you, we're heading down there. So many prisoners. I follow Pike down there. I'm going okay. too. All right, yeah. everyone else. Everybody fucking checks. come down. Self checks. Are we going Self checks, down? everyone. Yeah. And, all right. So, so you guys both beat them in our initiative. So, I'll roll attacks. Both of you, just roll, roll the dice. Just roll the dice. Just roll the dice. Okay. Nineteen. Yes. Twenty-eight. Getting a handle on my arm. Okay. armor. Uh, we don't need to roll damage. He has like two hit points left. <laughs> you guys oh. pepper him with additional arrows and daggers. Like the poor guy's like, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and just goes down oh, no, in this, this horrible sense of overkill. His body just <laughs> slumps up against the door, God, and is currently like, <laughs> like actually <laughs> leaning against the wooden door that he was guarding. I say on my earring, I think we found the prison cells. Get down here. We're coming. I'm assuming they're, Both they're dead. Both are. I start oh. looting the bodies. All right. So self checks. I think we're still 16. Leaving. 17. 12. 12. 
Nineteen. All right, <laughs> go team. Stealthy bastard. Yes. <laughs> now that was with disadvantage. Oh my god. Yes. I have to roll again. Yes. Because Why? you're in heavy plate armor. Yeah. <gasps> no. You got this, you got Do it. It's okay. It's okay. It's it's okay. So Come, on, sweet. Come on, sweetie. Come on, sweetie. No whammies. Ash. <laughs> That's not as bad. That's still not bad. I rolled an eight. Okay. Plus what? Plus what's your? Plus next? nothing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, <Damn. laughs> You guys all rush down the stairs, the <laughs> clanking of the plate armor as you're going down. The rest of you like kind of wince as you notice it, but you make down anyway. Uh, oh my god! I'm actually gonna go ahead and throw guidance on Pike now. <laughs> what does okay. guidance do? What does guidance do? Guidance. Um, it gives you a, a, a plus on your ability checks. Oh, that's. Really uh, it gives you a windy four uh, uh, plus to your. Uh, they already knew we were here. Okay. Now they there really know we're here. <laughs> All right. Where they are. So the rest of you have made it down. Uh, Surprise. You're in this hallway. <laughs> there are two dead Durgar on the ground, one with a closed door and an open door. Well, let's I go stand. look in the open door. All right. Stealthily. As you glance over into the open door, you can see what appears to be a series cells. of dungeon cells, cells held underneath the stronghold. Uh, Lady Kima. Within these. You can see there are a number of dwarven captives that are in very, very, very poor health. <gasps> I don't care about them. That oh, are currently no, lying, to get them awake. lying are, down, are unfed, any of them lady gone. Kima? Because if not, they're about to die. No, the <laughs> regular dwarves. I go, I go inspect them and, and see uh, okay. what's going on. I'll go in with Tiberius. Okay. Uh, you guys enter the, uh, and as you look around, there are just a series of largely decomposed bodies in a few of these cells. I think people have just been left to die. Oh, no. um, one, there are these kind of strange, deep underground rat-like creatures that are kind of feeding on one of them. Mm. Um, one of the dwarves is just wheezing in pain. Ugh, you can see like his stomach is a little descended. Um, the other one is either unconscious, asleep, or dead. You can't tell. Can I, can I do like a, a yeah. mass cure? You can if you'd that? like. Okay, I'll do that. And you've been on Yes, I was about to say, I'm going to go start inspecting the other door. I'll, I'll go with him. Oh, I was going to say, unlock the prison cells. Yeah. yeah, can you unlock the prison oh, cells? Oh, sorry. Yeah. We go, can we go in? Uh, can we talk to them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, what? All right, so you go through. It's fairly simple over time for you to unlock the cells if you'd like for the two that are in there. Um, the, there is a difference between heal, healing magic and nutrition. Um, you make them feel physically better for the moment, but their physical form itself is failing. They like they, Just a thought. They need Shouldn't food, they need food, air, rest, they need we let prisoners out to be out of here out. soon. They're both on the, Put them in on the, the edge of death. I go to I go to I go to, I go to, I go to the room and I take out the you bottle know, of water. And I'll do the opposite one. Okay. So I make sure you guys hear heavy footsteps coming from the stairway you guys just okay. descended from. I go uh, stand right next oh, to the stairway. In the, in the cells. In the, in the cells. cells. In the cells. Uh, I pull my sister and we flank the. I push her into flanking positions oh, at the God. door. Wait. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, where where, where are they coming from? Not the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. She has a flanking from where position. we entered. Point blank. Yeah, I wouldn't call it. What are you guys doing? Um, I jump in the cells and I pull a dead, decomposing corpse over top of me. Wow. Ew. All right. Heal it. Wow. All kinds of nasty. This. I find a corner of a cell and slow down a lot of guns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I sh- make sure all the doors are shut, not locked. All right. All the doors are shut. Uh, Pike, anything you're doing? I'm just, you know, preparing. <laughs> just kick it. <laughs> All right. Just kick it. Do we need to move out of the I'm way of the stairs? Vax is scooching Scanlan out of the way to take that position right there. Put the bear take in the back here. cell. Yeah, put, Scanlan, put where are you? Up. There's voices. There's voices coming from the stairs. Yeah, someone's coming. But there's a bear in the stairs. Well, Trinket's coming down. I say, Trinket. Okay. Like, I call Trinket. 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 Trinket no. barely hears you from way over Trinket. the side. Moving <laughs> into this room. Koro uh, just steps back along the side of the stairs and kind of out of. View. A few moments pass and the footsteps slowly trail off. Huh. I leave oh, and right. turn around Top where Vex is. I know. What's in the other door? Uh, God damn it. All right. The other door is currently locked, from what you can tell. One moment. 
Uh, it is now not locked, I think. <laughs> 25. Okay. Um, you push the door open and you see um, immediately the fast moving heft of some large blade towards your head. Ooh, yeah. Ooh snap! Mm. Uh, no, it's a trap. That, ready to hit me in the head. That is a <laughs> 24 versus armor class. Okay, that hits. That hits. All right. I thought you were good. Uh, I'm going to use uncanny dodge. Okay. What would have been 20 points of slashing damage is reduced to 10. So you take 10 damage as the the axe hits hits you and embeds itself in the wooden door, pulls back. Now what you see is a Duragar wearing like this nasty looking black leather tunic with a hood pulled back with a giant uh, gnarled, uh, like hefted uh, great axe. The word escaped me on that one. Um, has a bunch of scars in its face. Yeah. It's kind of grinning as it pulls the axe out of the doorway. Right, I spit on the ground and yank my belt off and throw it and at And I yell, hold. Okay. Uh, as you hold? throw the belt. Yeah. yeah. Tell him to stop attacking. Serpent. Kind of ducks out of the way. Yeah. There we go. Pulls back out of the way the, as the snake kind of forms itself. It goes ahead and makes an attack. Go ahead and roll the snake attack against him. Snake attack. Uh, snake attack. 12 plus, I don't know what, 12. Is my attack, his attack, snake attack? Uh, did you roll 12 on that? Yeah. Okay, that will not hit, unfortunately. Right. As he just kind of slaps it off himself and it kind of <laughs> cascades off to the side of the room. Is he going to sell? Um, is it basically a straight himself. line from him to Vax? To at, at which point he kicks the door closed again. <laughs> Can I, uh, in my rage, bull yes. rush through the yes. door yes. and yes. smash yes. him? Now we're rolling initiative, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as this is going on, I immediately cast some stone skin on myself. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. That'll do. What I like is that there are eight of us in one of them. So far. So we don't know what else is. But he's. he's got in a, a room big by I can see the square, it's very small. It's possible. We can to turn yeah. it. Yeah. He looked inside the and seen a brief bit of the room. Um, Alright, so uh, 25 to 20? 20. 26. 20. 26. Alright, <coughs> right, uh, 20 to 15. 18. 19. 19. 19. Oh. All right. 15 to 10? 14. 14. 10 to 5? 7. <laughs> 5 to 1? 4. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Percy, you're up first. All right. Um, where am you I? are way back in this cell, and you hear like a, a slam of broken wood and another slam of a door closing. Okay, I'm gonna run into the hall. All right. Uh, make an acrobatic check to try and move through this cluster of people here. I can do that. Cluster of poop. Um, 24. 24. You leap over, kind of vaulting off of uh, trinket Parkour. land. <gasps> You've moved into nice. this hallway, and that's the extent of your movement. Okay, I'm going to try and take a sh uh, shot and blow the lock. Okay. With the bad news or with your? Oh no, I'm, the bad news is away. I okay. Just with the handbell. Okay. So. Shooting at the lock of the door. Okay, go for it. Um, Jesus, H. Uh, 19, that's uh, 20, uh, 30. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Uh, nine points of damage. Nine points of damage, okay. Uh, as the door slams back and you kind of prepare yourself to try and kick it open, you hear the familiar of one of Percy's cover box bullets as the actual handle of the door <laughs> gets blown off and there's a small hole in the wooden door now where its handle once was. Um, the door kind of swings open a little bit loosely due to the impact. That ends uh, your turn. That's in, that ends my turn. Vax, you're up. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is grab the hole of the door and yank it open and yell, your turn, Grog. Okay. Oh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> um, as you pull it open, <laughs> The dwarf backs up over what you can see now. And this room is completely covered in a series of really nasty hooked instruments. As uh, I said, hot irons. You can see large pincers. You can see various <laughs> blades. Oh, it's like a torture chamber. It's a torture oh chamber. It's Christmas. Oh, no, um, Grog. Grog is running into Toys R Us. Uh, <gasps> great. So you, you, you see gently as he backs away, there is uh, someone on this kind of rack-like table 
and uh, the the dwarf backs up with his axe, kind of getting ready. I use my bonus action to say, "You are so fucked, dwarf." <laughs> 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 All right, uh, that brings us to Tiberius. Oh, <clears throat> ooh, I like where this is going, Vax. Wait, I go over there first, okay. and then I say that. Uh, <laughs> acrobatics check. Yes. Acrobatics, what? You, you gotta jump over people. Move through people. The area is congested. Small spaces, man. People get my way. Got, it's the downside of okay. a big party. Okay, uh, 22. 22, you manage to move through, push the bear out of the way. Move, drink it. Get out of the way. All right, you managed to make your way. The bear is surprisingly Percy. smells really nice. All right, Tiberius, what do you want to do now? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, follow suit as I see what uh, Vax is doing. I'm going to cast whole person on the dwarf. You don't have visual on the dwarf currently. The what? Dwarf is That's back, absurd! Is back. As you run through the hallway, <laughs> which you don't even know there's a dwarf there, you rush out of the hallway after hearing all this commotion, you look in and there's an open door into a room that's currently vacant. You don't have enough movement to get close enough, unfortunately. Uh, we'll I, I encourage, I encourage violence. <laughs> <laughs> a wondrous use of an action. Do it. Do it, Grog. Destroy right. him. Uh, no, he'll be gone to any of his existence. Um, uh, kind of That's the best line of the night. Do we get any? <laughs> you are uh, currently in a cell with the dead body draped over you. Oh. <laughs> It's <laughs> cozy down here. Okay. So with the dead body, I hear what's going on. I we're role playing it out. Yeah. I the body off of I morph into minxie form. And as I morph into minxie form, I take the dead body that's on top of me and just pick it up with my mouth. Okay. Uh in your mouth, the body stirs. It wasn't quite <gasps> there. Oh, what? Oh, it was I wanted a dead one. It makes <laughs> Can sense. I drop I'm that sorry. one and find like a dead well, one? Well, you wanted a dead one, it is now. Uh, oh! <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's fine. That's fine. He's dead. Fucking the entire game being the worst person. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I tried so hard, was it you guys. A child I tried so on? hard, but it's still the fucking worst. <laughs> so, you now have, you have a, a, a dead. Gaunt dwarf hanging from Macy's mouth. So what do you want to do? Um, Keep chewing. It was. It was. <laughs> no, go ahead, do something else. At least it's just not gamey. Go ahead, go ahead. Size your bonus action. Keep the tries. Keep the tries so hard. You're not trying hard enough, David. Fuck you, man. I'm gonna have a tough day. Your little dwarf. Bex brought up the fact that I killed a kid. <laughs> Having all these memories come back, and just I'm, I'm on the brink. Yeah, there's some PTSD. I'm, I'm on sorry. the brink. I'm sorry. Right. So I've got this now dead corpse wow. in my mouth, and I come out around the corner. All right, oh make gosh. it a bags check because you're still moving this cluster to hallway with a dead dwarf in your. Holy I'm, cow. A, I'm a tiger, so like. There you go. Um, that was Grace Pine's cousin. Um, <laughs> oh man. I have an advantage. Oh, uh, no. I rolled a 15. Yeah, you're fine. Finish. Much you're kind of leaping through. I'm All right. A, I'm pouncy. All right. Um, and I come out into the hallway. All right. You actually <laughs> sh shift Tiberius in a way. This is a very gosh. small space. You're a very big cat. You're kind of really pushing the space here. Yeah. Uh, it's and very, very tight quarters for you. You're like, Ugh, uh, As a cat, uh, you smell less good as a trinket does. <laughs> It's not me, it's the dead body. Oh, that's I, um, <laughs> and I, I look at the dwarf. You can't see him from your vantage point. He's actually back I can't out see him, of can't the see him. sight. No? We can't see him. Can I, can I you don't even know there's a dwarf there. You just know there's some sort of commotion going on. You move around the corner Everybody and you see just an empty room. Everybody give him a turn to Grog. <laughs> no, let just him go this, in the like, room. Just, let's go do with his butthole. I look at Grog and I foam at the mouth a little bit with the corpse and I... Encourage violence. I encourage violence. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Next. Just gnawing on oh, the dead well, door. let's make this nice and easy. I smack Grog on the ass and say, go get it. <laughs> All right. Grog, it's your turn. Does he get advantage yeah. because we're only encouraging yeah. Oh, yeah. no. No. You do get an inspiration dice for this whole setup. <laughs> uh, if you don't kill him in one shot. Okay, so, <laughs> so you run in. You said the room's full of shiny, pointy things on the wall, right? Yes. I would like to bull rush the dwarf up and against the wall and try and spear him with all the sharp shit on the wall. Okay! Yeah. Oh. So, uh... <laughs> oh, that's nasty. 
Okay then. Uh, so for for the <laughs> instant karma's gonna get you, man. All right. So go ahead and make a uh, an athletics you get that check. <laughs> Twenty-four. Yeah, against his seven. Nice. Um, <laughs> you rush in, and with your attack, your first attack, you grab him, lift him, and you can see there's a series of giant meat hooks hanging from the back of the wall, and you just lift him up and shoot, shove him down onto the hook, which protrudes from the front of his oh chest. Going, God, just, oh, 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 perfect. Take yes. Tell me, I get another attack. Uh, you do. Oh. Oh. Excellent. So that I, is uh, twelve points of damage, and he is off. currently. Yes. He's currently Impaled? restrained by the hook through his chest. Oh, Perfect. God. With my second attack, as he's screaming out, I reach inside, grab his lower jaw, and pull him straight down. Okay, make an attack roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> oh, I love Max is using his free hand to cover his eyes. <laughs> Ke- Keyleth starts 24. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage on this. Oh, six. For the 12. Uh, n- n- for flavor, you're attacking. Yes, for flavor, roll twelve. Why not? Okay, you're well, pulling his jaw. Excellent. <laughs> really high. Fifteen. Okay. Um, so after you throw him onto the hook, his axe clatters to the ground, and he reaches up with his hands to grab you. And it looks like he's pulling back to try and bring you in for a headbutt. This kind of angry look of, of burning rage in his white eyes. This 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 fucked up Duragar with all these scars in his face. As he reaches up towards you, you take your giant hand and jam it into his maw with this horrible sound as you put all of your muscle into it, glaring him in the face with a terrible grin, you and yank the jaw from the bottom of his head. Uh, a spatter of blood across the front of his neck and this tongue dangling, it goes, it gives it this horrible this, this gurgling scream as all the blood begins to pour up into his throat. Uh, with that, you just you you clutching the jaw with one hand, you begin to pummel him in the face <laughs> oh, with his jaw as he's watching his head slowly cave in um, until eventually he's no longer moving and you kind of throw the jaw to the ground. <laughs> You're gonna coated in blood. Wait, I think Grog. Um, I think he did his job. I scream, like, "Good job, Grog! That's your best one yet." <laughs> <laughs> and they say video games are violent. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> As you've entered the room now, and you've got Wait, is he dead? Oh, he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's very dead. We made cheese of him. <laughs> uh, lies there limply on the wall, kind of twitching every few seconds. Uh, Grog, still in a rage, you look over at the other individual. You can see now, strapped to this uh, this wooden frame, is a smallish humanoid uh, female, currently chained and being pulled on a rack. You can see a bunch of scars and wounds, blood is that pouring from each one of them. Yeah, man. I'm running in. Do I know how to disable the rack? Uh, you you Jesus. could probably figure it out with a, with a, a tinkered. Uh, is it, is Pike, it ch- is it chains can I run home heal her? We need Pike in here. Is I'll it chains go. Or rope? I'm gonna, yeah. All right, I'm gonna uh, hold this Pike. Chains holding her on. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna undo it. Okay. Wait. Just go, go ahead and make her? go ahead and make it's a check. It's gotta be her. Whatever. It is. Uh, what what, is, what do I add? Proficiency bonus. Proficiency bonus. Um, twelve. Twelve. Okay. <laughs> You take a moment and you manage to find where the wench of this machine is, where you can go ahead and release the tension, and eventually the chains go a little more slack. And the halfling woman takes a deep breath and just kind of looks about the room a second. It looks like there's a bit of haze, but in through the haze, there is just this this constant, this constant anger. Oh. And you, she looks like, So? Are you going to let me go? Come on, release these chains! Wait, wait. Who is she? she is <laughs> can we, um,. Can we insight and make sure that it's really who You can indeed. Yeah, perception, per, uh, This is into the check. Great, I don't what get any uh, Anybody okay. else want to roll for insight? Well. Like just insight? Like the Black twins fetch it. Oh boy. Like Scamlin, come up here. Yeah, yeah, oh, huh. 15, oh. 15? Oh, she's not in her right I'm, mind. I'm, 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 I'm going to take, take a peek at her. Very small, very small. What am I doing? What am I rolling for? Insight, see if she's in her right mind. 18's better. Okay. I mean, at this point, it's it's pretty apparent that whatever this woman is, she's been here a while and has been subjected to many, many horrible things and still has that spark of life to her, mainly out of vengeance, anger, and, and pain, but she does not seem to be overtly aggressive or trying to deceive you, just trying to get out of these fucking chains. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna check on her. What's up, Arcana check? To... See if there's like any kind of... Hold on. Any, kind of, any kind of magical impurity is in her. Best you can tell, there's none. I'm pulling out my 
uh, lock picks, and I'm gonna start working on her. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna heal her with a little bit of a song. And you know oh, my yeah. lock pick snaps, so just totally tink. Yeah. Great. How far? How hurt? If is I she? if I may. Oh please. She's pretty rough. She looks so. like like as, as you look up. Uh, she she's not clothed. Uh, her body is just a Cheers. spray of scars and gashes oh. and, and, and rake marks, and she's been tortured to an extent you hadn't seen a person. And to have to still be like like tensing her muscles against the chains and looking at you with this this intensity. If this is indeed Lady Kima, you now see why she's made the reputation she has. Okay. Uh, I step forward and I and I, and I, and I pull out my flute and I, I sing, uh, as long as I got my song and flute, I'm gonna <laughs> give some healing to you. Love and magic in the air tonight. Gonna give you some hit points. <laughs> gonna give you some hit points. Yeah. Gonna give you some hit points. Okay, so I roll so nine nine. Okay, okay. So so the, the fresher wounds seal up. The blood flow comes to a stop, um, and you see her muscles tense for a moment, or, or her tension in her muscles lax for a minute. She kind of looks to you for a second and goes, it's, "It's been a while since I've heard a song." Thank you. There's a slow jam. Please, please be careful for a moment. Can someone cover her ears for just a second? Yeah, I got it. Ear muffs. <laughs> I'm going to utility shot. I'm going to, I'm going to just put my gun against the lock somewhere where it will not harm her and just let her. Okay, cool. So, uh, go ahead and roll damage. Oh, you don't have to roll the hit. It's right there. Ears. That's fine. Um, Fifteen. How many? Is, is it two locks? Uh, well, there's one chain, uh, one chain for legs, one chain for the arms. Okay, so oh. 15 for the legs. Yeah. Uh, 10 for the arms. Okay, so <laughs> the legs get free. <laughs> the chain mostly snaps on the top part, but not quite enough. It's enough for you, Grog. I you got it. Reach <laughs> over and bring it down with a brief moment of extreme tension to the whole room. Watch Grog walk up with his axe and swing it down towards <laughs> this halfling. Before we have a moment to stop, everyone's heart just. Skips the beat, the chain is bisected, at which point the halfling woman immediately jumps to her feet with almost like a key up stand. It is now standing on top of the uh, of the table. She, her arms are still bound and she... You can now see where the metal was weakened from the axe blow. She tsh, pulls herself free from the metal binding. So there's there's a, a blister across her wrist you can see from just the... The, how long she's been pulling against these restraints, but she bore through it with a little bit of blood that trickles from that wound. She has freed herself, and she looks around the rest of the group. So I take it you're not from around here. <laughs> no, would you like some water? <laughs> she grabs it from it, pulls off the cork, and just starts chugging like she hasn't had anything to drink nice. in a long time. Lady Kima, we need to get you out of here. Uh, Allura has sent us. She caps it off after a moment, and kind of takes a deep breath. I'd hoped she would. It was foolish of me to come down here so unprepared. I just knew there wasn't much time. <sighs> time to what? <clears throat> she kind of looks around and says, Look, we done. It's a story. I have no. She kind of points to her pretty much unclothed, unarmored form and says, I need to find my implements. We need to get out of here. Could I offer you this black studded leather <gasps> dwarven armor? Um, it's not leather, actually. It's magical. Yeah. Oh, would you through. care for this robe? Maybe. <laughs> it's it's what what armor are you offering it's her? The, black the armor that I gave, I found, gave to Grog. It's magical. Oh, oh, it's a leather. Yes. Okay. It's in the bag. <laughs> Sure, it works for now. And she takes it from me and starts putting it on. And you see, like her wincing as she puts it on, as it kind of covers some of the wounds. Her whole body is just sore, but she still pushes through it. I'm gonna heal her a little bit more. Okay. I'll put my, my hands. Over. I'm sorry, you're not fully healed. Let me help you out. I, 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 as you do, she kind of takes a moment and says, <laughs> you, "You heal her." She goes, "Can I?" Can I she sees your mace and goes, "Can I borrow that for a second? Uh, please. Ooh. My mace. Your mace, please. What do you need it for? <laughs> You can have mine. Do you trust me? I don't know. <laughs> this is all I have to protect myself. You've come this far. Grog has something for you. Give it, give it. Give it. Say yes to life, bye. All right, well, I also have a morning star, but this is... <laughs> <laughs> you, are you going to give it back? She, as you hand it out, she grabs it from your hand. <laughs> that was rude. 
food. Walks to the edge of the table. I don't like her. Stares at the dwarf that is currently hooked onto the wall. And with an RGL, just slams it right into his face, causing his head to explode against the back of the wall. Slams it again and again and again, oh. and it's just making like hamburger of his entire body. Oh, the arm slaws off, and she's just going nuts. She you can mad. see her just bludgeoning over and over again with like just spray of gore on her, and there's this look of, of anger, frustration, and 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 a sick sense of joy a little bit in her eyes, and how she's just tearing this dwarf apart. Eventually, after this, this this frenzy, you're all taken aback, and she takes a moment. There is very little left recognizable of once was was I, a Duragar. I notice a uh, bulge in Grog's pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I use my I use my maid hand to slowly pick up my bottle of water. <laughs> okay. Um. She takes the the uh, mm. the may she bar from you. I'm sorry, I question. As she begins to hand it back to you, there's a slight flash of radiant energy that emanates from her hand, and it burns all of the blood that currently encapsulates the mace off. It hands it back to you. Thank you. I needed oh, that. Very Ooh. welcome. Uh, give sorry. her something, Ron. Let her use yeah. one of your things. That was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, give her one of your things, Grog. Could I, um, yeah. would you like to touch my axe? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to part with it, certainly. Oh. <clears throat> Maybe we should get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we collect your things? I yeah, where are they? The you know? I have no idea. <laughs> they're either in the vault or they're in the armory. The vault or the arm armory? Those are places There's that we can go? <laughs> There's a vault. There's a vault. There's a vault. stairs in, this, in the room. As far as I can tell. My Lady Kima, are these things absolutely necessary? We have a secret entrance to this place. We could leave now. Are they of vital importance, the things you've lost? She kind of thinks for a second and, for a second and goes, They are divine implements gifted to me from an avatar of Bahamut. Directly, I feel to leave them behind would be a partial failure to my quest. Not to mention that what we may face beyond this We'll need every bit of help we can get. Oh, shit. Well, that's that, have a friend Let's us. find the friggin' sure. vault. Let's go to the vault. As Let's you show the back of that card, she gives you a look and smiles and says, oh, It's good to see that your scale of color does not belie your intent. That is a face I've not seen for some time. I thank you. She leaps off the, uh, the table. So, shall we? I, I go up to her. Yeah, do you know where the vault is? I can show you. Yes. Lead I, I go way. up to her, yeah. still in my minxy form, and I just kind of. Have you dropped kind of the body? Yeah, I, I get right up behind <laughs> them too, and like right right competing. For no, I dropped the body. I, no, I. Oh. While she was talking, I oh. took the body and I kind of drug it back and I buried my shame. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. first, I buried my shame. Okay, your shame has been <laughs> sufficiently buried. <laughs> buried the shame. And then I go, oh. And I, I purr. Okay. I, I, she kind of pats, she doesn't look at you, but she pats you absentmindedly as she passes you her direct intent on heading back up those stairs herself. Right. Okay, let's go, but let's shall go. we unlock all the other dwarves? Yes, yeah, so let's let all the other dwarves out and maybe give them some food. To okay. try to help him out if in, the, in the meantime, I have a, a great sword or a morning star lace that you can have until we find your items. Great sword. Great sword it is. Boop. She takes from you, and the sword is great. a little over a foot taller than she is. Maybe a little more than that. But, She's really but as you hand it to her, she still She's takes it. You can halfling. see yeah. she is That's a better. built halfling female. She yeah. has seen some war, and she has survived some shit. She's the Tyler she, Durden of halfling. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> As I see her grab the sword, I ask, would you care for some ale? <laughs> she kind of glances over her shoulder at you and says, later, we have nothing to celebrate for yet. Absolutely. Yeah. Plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> she like comes to your knee. <laughs> yeah, oh my can, I, can I run in the little prison and just tell the dwarves if they are conscious to say, don't exit from where you came. There's a secret entrance up and in a storeroom. Go that way and stealth out. Okay, uh, one of the ones that's no, semi-conscious kind of- right. All of that, of, I say all of it. Yeah. He sits up and looks at- That's <laughs> fucked up. Um, sits up and looks back at you and- Thank you. Thank you kindly. Here's some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> he takes it hungrily through the bars and just starts st st like eating it just incessantly okay. as you leave. Um, all right, it's government chief. 
Alright, so uh, Lady Kim is it's already Velveeta. up the stairs. Oh, we're oh, falling up the stairs. stairs. Yeah. Uh-huh. Calories. Alright. <laughs> so, turn this off here. Is it oh, the goodness, oh, goodness. I'm right with Mixie. Uh, I place a hand on Lady Kima's shoulder. Perfection. <laughs> place a hand on Kima's shoulder and say, please allow me and move Perfection. several feet ahead of her and start sneaking along. As you move up to her, you notice she's standing at the top of the, at the bottom of the stairs mm. with attention, staring up at the top of the stairway where Clarota is looking down at her oh. and backing away. And oh, she goes, yes. wait, oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. I put my mage hand in front of her, wait, 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 hold on, it's, it's fine. Uh, this mind flare is with us. We saved him, or he, uh, he's our ally now. He's fine. Uh, no one needs <laughs> to fight. He, she's fine. <laughs> he's fine. He's his his name is Clarota. Herself. Without taking her eyes off of Clarota. This is Kiva. She's, Kiva. She looks Kiva. back Kiva. over. <laughs> Uh, we are allies, oh, yes? Uh, are you to tell me that you've come down here and allied yourself with an entity that is the anathema of the mountain? Uh, uh, yes. I'm right at her shoulder, so I say, mountain. we understand he's dangerous, but he's gotten us this far. And for what purpose? You think they don't have plots lined out for no, no, weeks no. and months? No, listen, listen. There is no he trust to be had with these creatures. He has been shit out by these creatures. They do not want him or trust him. He is an outcast. And we are working together in this moment. And he was the one. Without him, we would not have gotten here. We see a single And with tear him, you will never get Loretta's out. Eye. No. He, we, we have, we have his, 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 his alliance. Uh, his, uh, there's a greater entity controlling his people, which he has been uh, 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 outcast from, like Vector was saying. And and have you not thought for a second that perhaps all of you are being manipulated by this creature? You can see the great sword now flares with divine energy, and she goes, I will not stand here and let us ally ourselves with this filth! Oh, Lady Kima! And I blow fire breath. And I use control flames to create a bunch of swords around me. With fire. Don't threaten Kima. She's bad. I give you my word. Her attention, divided from Clorota, now tends towards you. Don't act me a fool, and don't treat me like one either. None of us are half-wits as you're claiming. We would not be fooled by such a creature like this. The words he speaks is true, and we believe him. You go ahead and make a uh, diplomacy check. Get All right, persuasion, on. persuasion. Get it on, Tiberius. Get it on. Mm-hmm. That's terrible. Uh, oh. Get it off? Uh. F- not good. Not good? Not good. 12. 12, okay. She walks towards you, and with each step, you can see the color of her eyes begins to vanish, giving way to an extremely bright, burning silver light. And she says, She's so cool. Listen. Yes. You come with me. Without this creature. Or you continue with it and without me. Why well, have to be like that? <laughs> I will not walk aside this. I have had its people devour mine since I stepped foot in here. This creature, whatever its reasoning is, is not in your best interest. It will lead you into a web of your own destruction. I've seen their kind work. Clarota. Yeah, they're mostly buttholes, but he's not a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. Clarota. He had to kill a couple, and he actually helped a lot. Speak your mind. Convince her. Clarota. Fix this. Clarota at the top of the stairs. You can see like these tendrils in his mouth kind of curled back with a sneer. His hands kind of crossed before. Thing. Clarota just says, Listen. I am not going to walk where I am. Welcome. Oh, I will not wake up with this giving us a walk woman's in blade in my back. I, uh, we made a deal. People with kids. I walk between them and put hands out. <laughs> Come on, and say, we play. all want the same thing. Kima, tell us, what is it that you've come here for? What is your purpose here? Speak your mind if you are true. Kima turns back towards you, the same kind of glowing flare in her eyes. I've come here to rid this mountain and this continent of the darkness that resides deep within the battles of this thing's city. Clarota, why have you come here? What is it you seek? 
Koro to kind of settles into itself for a second. Uh, I've come to destroy this creature, Kaval, and free my people. Then the two of you, get over your fucking shit! <laughs> we want the same thing here! Get over yourselves, both of you. We share a common purpose. We are going to end this fucking bullshit. Kima, we have come here for you. Pay us the respect that we have earned. We have come a long way for you. He is an unlikely ally, but he has gotten us to this point. And together, for this moment and this moment only, we can work together. We don't have to be school chums or buddies in a week from now, but right now, right here, we will work together and achieve the same thing. What say you, Kima? She looks towards you and says, Free his people, he says. What do you think will happen once his people are free? Should they let us walk out on our own? Yes, he said so. And mm, <laughs> then there'll be buttholes when we leave. I mean, you know so very little of these dark caverns, my dragon friend. Yeah, it's our first time These yet. entities I watched steal the very life essence of the men and women I hired and traveled with for weeks down here. I watched them capture them and devour their very minds before me and laugh and cackle as I fled into the shadows. But they were under control of Kavarn at the point. Yeah. Oh, understand. Whether or not Kavarn controls them to give them direction, they are of that type of mindset at all points. They do not hope society will thrive. They do not want us free peoples to walk the surface. They want us for food. Lady Kima, if I may, if you are intending us to choose between you and our ally, Clarota, and we can't get you to see eye to eye with us, then I'm afraid you leave us no choice but to choose our own friend, Clarota, over you. What? We're giving you one last chance. Either you are with us, or you are against us. This is a threat. So you walk in here, save me from my binds, under the words of my dear lifelong friend, Arcanist Delora. We mean you no ill will. It is you who are aggravating the situation. You could be sitting in a cell by yourself doing fuck all, or ending this problem now. Make a persuasion check. Just everyone is taking I'm so nervous. Oh, Scanlan, come on! Oh, no. Well, I rolled a three. <laughs> I rolled a 13. But I have a plus 13. Okay. Uh, so that's a 16. Okay. A 16. Oh. Uh, plus 13. Three plus 13? Okay. Um, plus, plus, uh, hold on. <laughs> because you didn't, where the fuck? <laughs> war, war God's blessing. Cleric's will. No, I can't do that because that's when a creature makes an attack roll. <laughs> Get him, Scanlan. <laughs> Can I assist? He assisted because he was talking. Oh, he too was, late. Once, he was once the roll. Right, right. And because of that, the DC has been considered. <laughs> um. She takes a moment and steps forward. She's uh, she's a few inches taller than you. Of course she is. Um, <laughs> she kind of <laughs> looks at you and says, "He have the pretty voice. I'm grateful that all of you have come and traversed all this danger in my name to free me from the binds that have held me. And I do wish very much to walk alongside you to this end. And I understand it may be very well possible that this thing has taken your minds without your knowledge. However, and her eyes close for a second and she opens them again and that kind of radiant spark of silver fades. Her normal eye color returns. We see ourselves of little choices. And I have very little allies at this point to achieve my goal. If we are to travel together, this one must walk in step the entire time. One single 
misstep. And I will not hesitate to carve that head from your body in the name of Bahamut. I'm sorry, you like dancing. I, I will help, help you do that if he missteps. Oh my gosh. Clarota, hands still crossed, kind of takes a step down the stairs towards her. It's tendrils in its mouth, kind of. And please understand if you ever intend to try and cut my life short, I will also not hesitate to bore that beautiful mind from your skull. Once we murder this Gavon, you guys are going to laugh <laughs> <laughs> so hard. So friends then? Allies, allies. Everybody allies. understands allies. everyone now. Good times. The enemy of my enemy is mine. has mind sucking <laughs> tentacles. <laughs> she, look, she looks back at the rest of you and kind of gives you all an understanding look and a nod, and she says, I pray that you're all right. I pray that you're honest, and I pray that through some strange will of the gods, this entity is telling the truth. Because if it's not, none of us are making it out of your life. We are playing a game of chess here, Ken, and we will win. I whisper in her ear, I would have chosen you. <laughs> <laughs> and I start the humming Kumbaya. <laughs> Take the dagger and I make a happy face. <laughs> okay. She doesn't notice this as she steps up the stairs towards Clarota. Oh god. Okay. Clarota kind of steps back, hands out in front of this little spark of arcane energy, forming in his hands. Clarota, bringing the sword up in front of her, pushes Clarota aside and continues ascending back up the stairs oh. to the first level. <laughs> to the first level. Clarota puts the hands folded back together. Shall we? And oh walks up gosh. the stairs after her. And you all begin to ascend back with them to the first floor, and that's where we'll end the oh game. My oh my god! god. Mm. No. I thought we were going to have to pick. We got like 10 more minutes. Yeah, we have 10 more minutes. No, no, no. That's, no, that's, that's, a, good good yeah, that's a good place. Depending on where you guys are going next, it could be a little bit of a lengthy encounter. So. Oh my gosh. So, we're so gonna the building's end. empty. It's totally it's empty. empty. <laughs> There's nobody There's in there, no one has any idea everywhere. that you're here. Wait, show of hands, if we have to pick between one or the other, who's picking Kiva? Who's picking oh, Turtle Kiva? Face? I don't know. Because she's Allura's We're going to throw down. She's Allura's friend, be more she's good. I don't, I don't see it, this bitch. Undecided. You just want her because she's a badass and you could, yeah. hump, you could hump her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. okay. I that would be the, the most problem. awkward That's a good humping idea. ever. <laughs> Did you can see her work? work in that room of blood? <laughs> Only one of them is demanding that I become a liar. Wasn't Kima, isn't Kima a dwarf? No, Kima's, Kima's a halfling. halfling. halfling? She's yeah. a halfling. ropey, Wait, muscular halfling. I wanted to take some, some torture it? weapons. You can go back if you want. Yeah, can I go back since we have ten minutes and go get some torture weapons? What's it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this this will be pretty quick. You're going to have to grab a couple things because everyone's Where's heading up deity? the stairs. your deity, Harvey Keitel? <laughs> no! So, it's so, wrong! So, like the the war priest, however, who her the, the light of Saren Ray has guided her through her life. Once a, a gifted being of of light and joy, upon coming to the edge of death, her soul taken from her form and returned, going at sea and traveling with some of the more uh, rough and tumble folks of the landscape, has returned now with her mind bent on war, vengeance, and what it means to to win a battle through force if necessary. Um, watching. Pike rush off and going to gather up uh, what appear to be two large bladed hooks, um, a uh, a lengthy hand razor. Mm. Nice. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Lengthy and hand razor. Okay, go <laughs> top. Wow. Hold on, hold on. Lengthy hand razor. <laughs> <laughs> a medley of the first album. One? <laughs> uh, two, two kind of like large pointed hooks that are about two feet in length, almost like 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 a bladed high lie. Yeah. Um, and there, you gather a, a small bag of various instruments that are rusty and nasty. Uh, they're just in like a leather capture, you, you put that in your bag. That's all you have time to grab before you have to bolt back up to gather the rest. And we'll pick up the next game as you guys head up the stairs oh back into the hallway you first oh. entered. In the center of the Emberhold, Duragar Stronghold, Lady Kima released in a very tentative alliance. So thank you guys all for watching. Uh, <laughs> 
I Wait. Her so yeah. I know she's oh. not. Oh, hey. Oh, hello, oh. Si. I was doing my little pop-ins here. Yeah. Um, so we had some donations to the charity. <gasps> oh, that's <gasps> awesome. Really? Up. Yeah. Um, so Thank guys. I have terrible Thanks. handwriting, so Thanks, if I, guys. I wrote these myself <laughs> and I'm supposed to read them. Right, right. That's okay. The Conman 93. Conman 93. Thank you, buddy. Erlin. Erlin, thank you. A123 Junior. A123 Junior. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, Junior. Thanks, Junior. Poltergeist 123. Poltergeist 123, yeah. All good movies. Um, Sims. 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 Ruth Golfy. Yeah, Ruth Golfy. Thank, 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 thank you guys so much for donating. Really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in tonight, and for all you front page viewers, we stream six to seven hours, uh, five to six days a week. We do a lot of varied programming, from comic book shows to tabletop gaming to Steam group games, indie gaming, all sorts of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, every Friday night we have live music and bands play and stuff, and nice. tomorrow we're having a special party to celebrate our reaching 2,000 subscribers. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys are all Woo! welcome to stop by. Uh, it's from 7 to 9, that. we'll have a awesome. band playing, we're going to do some some fun group games, probably play some inappropriate Cards Against Humanity, oh. super fight, <laughs> stuff like As that. As if there was yeah, appropriate Cards right. Against Humanity. Yeah. Uh, every yeah. time I break it out, I'm like, I should never do this. I know. It's part <laughs> of fun. And we're, we're every Thursday, 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Usually run about two and a half, three hours, our game sessions. So uh, please come watch every Thursday. We'd love to have you guys. Yeah. And for Team Pumin, tomorrow is Iffy Appreciation Day. So mm. if you guys want to get on that. Uh, and for those uh, that know Iffy uh, Shelf Boys, and not much else. Iffy is a really prominent figure in the local comedy scene, and he does a lot of work uh, on shows like Key and Peel, Comedy Bang Bang, stuff like that. Um, he's a really talented dude. You should look him up uh, before you write those tweets, just so you can kind of know more of what he's about. And we are going to throw that drop cam up and set up for dancing. If any of you want to stay, you're welcome to. If not, you're welcome to leave. No one's going to force you. It's like a shower now that I brought it up. It's a good workout. You burn some calories after all that burn chicken. Burn some calories. Right? Exactly. We are, I think, 20 away from a giveaway. So as long as we're live, the giveaway counts. It's valid. So exactly. If you get 20 subs before we go offline, we will ship this wherever you are in the world. So uh, let's throw the drop cam up. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Woo!